Welcome back to Network Associates Coliseum here in Oakland, California. We're set for the kickoff, but before we do, let's go down to the third member of our crew today. And we'll talk to him a little later on. That's Brian Weber, our sideline guy. But you know what, Dave? You got to like the excitement and the energy. Everybody's, we think, done talking about the post-John Gruden stuff and getting on to the football here in Oakland. Well, that was last year, and just like the Patriots game, this is a new season. You got Mike Holmgren out here. Bill Callahan's a new coach, starting off a new era for Al Davis and the Oakland Raiders. Oakland has won the toss. They'll get a chance to receive, and we'll get a look at this guy's team right off the bat. That's Oakland head coach Bill Callahan, first year as head coach at any level. Became the 13th head coach in Raider history in March with the departure of John Gruden. Has been here the last four years as the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. On the other side of the ball, you'll see Mike Holmgren in his fourth season with the Seahawks, looking to improve on a 9-7 and seven record. Derek Combs is back deep along with Terry Kirby to receive the kick. Ryan Lindell will boot it away to get us underway here in the NFL season opener for the Seahawks. Lindell's a short one. It'll be taken at about the four. That's Kirby. He's out across the 30, pushed out about the 35. A nice return. Lindell, the kicker, has to make the stop. Rich Gannon, 27 touchdowns last year, only nine interceptions. Has done well against Seattle. Five touchdown passes, 474 yards in one contest last year. Raiders come out in a basic set. Charlie Garner is the tailback. Roland Williams comes over, sets on the other side. Gannon will check off. And we saw a lot of that, Dave, at practice. A lot of multiple formations and audibles. He'll pass right off the bat. Looking, checks it down. That's Richie. Richie stacked up. Sean Springs on the play, but not before he got five. The Raiders offensive line. Sims Stinchcomb. He's in for the injured Mo Collins. Robbins at the center. Middleton and Lincoln Kennedy, the pro bowler. The two pro bowlers inside, Jerry Rice and Brown, you know them. Hall of Famers, Richie, you saw him just there. Charlie Garner and Roland Williams at the tight end. Second down. In and out of the hands of Charlie Garner, nearly intercepted by the Seahawks. Well, we see right away early, one of the reasons Rich Gannon is such an effective quarterback is that he just gets the ball to players. He makes an audible right away and very smart. Look at the defensive line. Chad Eaton did a lot of talking here on a radio show. We'll see what that what happens there. Isaiah Kazabinski, you hear about him along with Simmons and Chad Brown and the defensive backs. Springs finally healthy, Lucas, Robertson, and Tongue. This one complete to Tim Brown across the middle. And Dave Craig, Tim Brown has made a diet the last four or five years of running crossing routes in the NFL. Tim Brown can find the holes and zones, and we see right away early in the game, Bill Callahan yesterday talked about up-tempo. The Raiders are coming out in a hurry-up, two-minute offense, trying to throw the defense of the Seahawks off balance. A pickup of nine, and that's a Raider first down. The ball's at about second base. Gannon will pass again, looking on the outside, complete to Rice. Rice did the old stop hitch, and it's complete Ken Lucas on the coverage. One thing that Rich Gannon noted right there, you get Jerry Rice one-on-one -on -one with anybody, and that's what uh, Rich Gannon just noted right there. He was bump and run. He ran a little hitch pass, good timing route. You know, anytime you have Jerry Rice, you get the ball to him. And Dave, look at this, a no huddle. Raiders pulling a little something special out, and a lot of people here in the Bay Area and all over the country were interested to see what they were going to do. And now and the here they get call time the Seahawks out. call timeout. And one of the things is you know, Dave, is when someone is running the no huddle on you, you can't get the right defensive personnel on the field. You as a quarterback, I know you love that. Well, you love that because Steve Sidwell, the defensive coordinator for the Seahawks, is making the calls, and 
Isaiah Kazavinsky, he's starting his first game, so he has to look over there, and he's also seeing these Raiders coming up there with their two-minute offense. So Anthony Simmons, all of them, they're all questioning. They got him yelling and frustrated as an offense. That's exactly what you want to see, and that's why the Raiders started off the game with a two-minute hurry-up offense. Definitely not a good pitcher if you're a Seahawks fan to see Anthony Simmons, one of your marquee players, with his helmet off, pointing. What the Raider, what the Seahawks have to do is get somebody in that huddle, say, hey, calm down. They're, go they're trying to get us off our game a little bit. So somebody in the Seahawks, defensive group there, has to say, hey, let's calm down and play football and adjust as the game goes. And it's a good, good mark by the Raiders to come out early, and they have the Seahawks on their heels. So again, we'll reset the offense after the timeout. Aaron Mitchell goes in motion, sets down again. Rice. Fakes the end around, hands off the Garner. Garner breaks through, he's got a hole. Garner all the way down to the eight yard line. And a nice pickup on the plate gashes the Seahawks defense for 29 yards. Ken Lucas on the tackle. Well, one of the things the Raiders, they've done right away early in the game is they start motioning players. They fake the handoff to Jerry Rice, the safety goes over to cover it, so he's out of position right there. Charlie Garner enables him to get right up inside the defensive line. A missed tackle there by Isaiah Kazavinsky, enabling Charlie Garner to get an extra 15, 20, 25 yards. Raiders bring on two tight ends in the formation. And there's a flag. Our referee today, Larry Nimmers, will give us the call. False start offense, number 89. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Mondrell Fulcher, a backup tight end, comes in the game and jumps off early. So both, the Raiders will back up. Excuse me, Dave. Both teams use a lot of motion and formation, and we'll show more as the game progresses how it affects the safeties, and you have to honor a guy like Jerry Rice, even if you fake a handoff to him. Rice lined up on Sean Springs. That is a key matchup. The handoff again to Garner, the same reverse play with Rice, nothing doing. Seahawks stack it up. Antonio Cochran gets the initial hit, a loss of one. And Dave, this is the area of the field where the Raiders have talked about all year long, the red area. Doing more in the red area, being more efficient down here. It's an important area for every team. From a defensive standpoint, you don't want to give up field goals or touchdowns in here. And from a Raiders standpoint, you want to take advantage of this opportunity, especially on the opening drive. Raiders in their two tight end set again. Again in the pass on second down, looking no place to go. Here comes the pressure. He's going to hook it. Out across the 10 before he's pushed out of bounds by Brandon Mitchell. But he picked up a couple. Eight to be exact. It says in the Raiders playbook, it talks about Rich Gannon. He's mobile, precise, skilled. Right here, he shows his mobility, and he shows his skill by getting as many yards as he can and gets out of bounds before Brandon Mitchell gets to him. Good play again. He did not see anything downfield, and that's why. He's only thrown nine interceptions last year. He's very, very smart with the football. A completion percentage of 65.8. And win you a lot of games in the NFL. Third and goal. Nobody in the backfield. Looking across the middle. Complete. That's Tim Brown. Touchdown, Raiders. So in what was a pass-happy series, for the Oakland Raiders, it culminates with a touchdown by Tim Brown. Smart play by Tim Brown. He found a hole in the zone. He sat there. We'll see right up here. That's where Tim Brown's going to be. Rich Gannon gets in the ball quick. Right now, all he has to do is dive over for the touchdown. Great start for the Oakland Raiders with the two-minute offense. They go down and get the touchdown. And there's a Seahawk hurt on the play. We're not exactly sure what that number is. Looks like Anthony Simmons, and if that is indeed Anthony Simmons, Dave, that is a huge blow to this defense. Anthony Simmons 
a guy that a lot of people think should have been in the Pro Bowl. A lot of speed, can fly around and hit and make plays. You definitely need him in your center. Well, Anthony Simmons is one of the better defensive players, like you mentioned, for them. We'll see if what the what the deal is with Anthony Simmons, but that will be a big loss for the Seahawks. And not only for this game, but for the future games. Remember, the Seahawks are in a new division full of wide receiver speed. Right there, you see Anthony Simmons who just circled. He got his right leg caught up. Yeah. Ah. His left leg got caught up. His right leg was stretched oh, out. And his left boy. leg got caught up. And just an awkward position for your leg to get caught up in. And hopefully Anthony Simmons will be able to return, but we'll wait and see. Sebastian Janikowski, who's had a rough preseason in terms of field goals, will come on to add the extra point. Tuiasa Sopo will hold with the injury to Shane Leckler. Yep, it's good. And we're 7 nothing here, Oakland Raiders. Four minutes, 13 seconds on the drive. Capped off by that eight-yard touchdown pass from Gannon to Brown. And we've got a flag on the play. Right by the goal line, a late flag. We'd like to welcome those of you watching the Philadelphia Tennessee game. And that man on the stretcher there is Seattle linebacker Brian Simmons, excuse me, Anthony Simmons. He injured a leg on the play. We're not sure exactly what it is. We'll get you updated on that when we know. But the Raiders came down in a four minute drive, which started off with a no huddle. And it ended in a Tim Brown touchdown catch. Janikowski to pound it away. It's low, but it's deep, and it's about three yards in, and here comes Morris. Out across the 10, he's got a hole, a big hole, and there goes Morris Morris. Morris Morris just has to beat Janikowski, and it looks like Janikowski gets him enough so that they can make the tackle. A huge return for Maurice Morris. Terry Kirby finishes him off, but Sebastian Janikowski was able to slow him down and pin him to the sidelines. What a great start for a rookie, Maurice Morris, to take that ball two yards deep in his end zone. Great blocking <laughs> at the point of attack right there. Maurice Morris, a big hole. All he has to do is run through it. Sebastian Janikowski did his job pushing him to the sideline, not enabling him to score, allowing the defense to see what they can do with the Seahawks offense. 66 yards on the return. And now that's what you call helping out a struggling quarterback. Matt Hasselbeck will pass right up the bat. Here comes the heat. Looks over the middle, complete. That's Bobby Ingram, a man who's always dangerous in the middle. 16 yards on the pickup, and that'll move the chains. You see Matt Hasselbeck's numbers. Only 40% quarterback rating in the preseason. He did struggle. He was the man two years ago, was benched last year. Trent Dilfer hurt in the preseason. So now Matt Hasselbeck has to go. Hasselbeck turning around and talking to Sean Al. He's got to rush to get this one off. He does, looking for the quick slant, complete. Corin Robinson, and he's very close to the first down. Let's take a look at the offensive lineman for the Seahawks. Walter Jones is out with a contract squabble. Womack, Hutchinson, Toback, Gray, and Wunsch, who was just brought in in training camp. The backs and receivers, Sean Alexander, a huge day. Max Strong, the fullback, Jackson, and Corn Robinson will be big at the wide receivers. The Tula Mealy will be at the tight end, and you'll also see Jeremy Stevens, the rookie from Washington, at the other tight end. High formation set. Play action pass. Hasselbeck rolls, nothing there, and he just turns inside and has to eat it. Napoleon Harris, the rookie linebacker, makes the stop. This defensive line, Perella and Adams, just brought in in free agency. Bryant, DeLawrence Grant will get the start. Napoleon Harris, the rookie inside. Romanowski from Denver, along with Barton at the other side. James Woodson, Charles Woodson at the corners. 
The future Hall of Famer Rod Woodson at the safety and Derek Gibson getting his first seasonal start at the strong safety position. Second and 10. And there's movement on the left side. It looked like 77 pork chop Womack. Let's see if he was drawn off. Full start offense, number 77, five yard penalty. Still second down. And Dave, I'm not sure why they call him pork chop. I think it has something to do with an old wrestler back in his home state, but you can't do this. Well, there's Floyd right there. He's had a tough time trying to fill the shoes of Walter Jones, who may be one of the best offensive tackles in the NFL, but he's holding out right now. Floyd Womack has to be more technically correct and understand the snap count. Absolutely, especially down here in the crucial red area. Second down, Sean Alexander bounces it outside, nowhere to go, and the ball's out. Balls is on the ground. And it's recovered by the Seahawks. Jerry Wunsch, one of your Wisconsin buddies, who came in two weeks ago, falls on it. A gain of four, even with the fumble. Well, they brought Jerry Wunsch in just because of the injuries to their offensive line. He was with Tampa Bay, and now he's coming in, and he's starting for the Seahawks. And right tackle made a big fumble recovery right there. This will be third down. Expect a shot in the end zone. Hasselbeck. The screen, Alexander, he's got a block, got another block inside, close to the goal line, but he's shut down early. Rod Woodson, the free agent from Baltimore, just signed this year, comes up and makes the hit, but not after a gain of 10. Decision time for Mike Holmgren. He's thinking about going for it. Not very often do you see a screen pass inside the 10, 15 yard line, but executed very, very well. Great block right there by Chris Gray, enabling Sean Alexander to get as close as he can to the end zone. Do you like this decision by Mike Holmgren, Dave Craig? Yes, I do. I'm, it just shows his team that, hey, we're going for it. Now they're calling timeout. They're going to talk about it a little bit, but I like the decision. Well, we'll come back and see what happens. The Raiders up by seven. Welcome back to Oakland. The Raiders up. 7-0 here, but the Seattle Seahawks are on the goal line. And this, Dave Craig, as you said, is a big-time call by Mike Holmgren. Fourth in inches. Play-action pass. Hasselbeck's in trouble. Throws. Complete. Touchdown. Itula Mealy. And the Seahawks are on the board. Everybody thought Sean Alexander was going to get the ball. The Raiders thought that. Matt Hasselbeck did a great job throughout this drive. Excellent patience right there. Mealy did not show up and get open until late. <laughs> You're right. In the, uh, in the pro progression of the pass, Hasselbeck was patient, got him the ball. Got open, he did, and Lindell will come on, attack on one. He ties things up here in Oakland. And we wonder, Dave, what would be the recipe for Matt Hasselbeck, being that he did struggle in the preseason. Would a Mike Holmgren put most of the onus on the running back, Sean Alexander, considering he had the huge day up in Seattle last year? Or would he do just what he did, put it right in the quarterback's hand? We'll be back in a moment. A look at the Bay here in Oakland. And the weather, much different, Dave, than uh, the last game the Raiders played. <laughs> different for a lot of reasons. Well, this is a lot different than the last time they played, but they know right now, early, they have a game on their hands, and the Seahawks came to play, going for it on fourth down with one yard to go and converting. Lindell kicks off. Kirby and Combs are deep. That's Kirby. He kind of slides down around the shortstop area, and that's where the Raiders will take over. We're locked up at seven here in Oakland. Anytime you have a Sean Alexander in your backfield, if you're a defense, you have to honor him. The ha Hasselback fakes it to him, shows a lot of poise, gets around and finds Mealy in the back corner of the end zone. Great confidence booster for Matt Hasselback early in this game. Gannon hands off to Garner. Garner gaffled up immediately on the play. Chad Eaton. And Eaton did his share of talking here in the Bay Area on a radio show about what he didn't like about the Raiders. He definitely, he grew up 
learning about the Raiders Seahawks rivalry and he brought that on the radio down here and kind of made a few people mad by some of his comments. No gain on the play there and that makes the Seattle Seahawks coach is very happy. Gannon will pass. Brown slipped down. Excuse me, that's Rice who slipped down right about the 30 yard line and it's incomplete. Robertson thought he should have had the ball. And a quick update, Anthony Simmons, ankle injury, he is questionable for today. 55, Marcus Bell comes in to replace him. The game's starting to settle down now a little bit. Early, a lot of excitement, the first opening game of the season. Excitement, two-minute drive, then the Seahawks come back. Now it's settling down into a football game. Third and 10 for the Raiders. Brown comes in motion. Gannon holding, holding. Complete, not complete. Looking for Richie, and it's knocked out by Marcus Bell. Right now, let's go to James Brown in Los Angeles for this game. Day. Hey, Ron, Packers trailed by 11 at the half, fought it into overtime, all knotted at 34. Ryan Longwell's 34-yard field goal gives the Packers a victory over the Atlanta Falcons. Back to Ron Pitts and Dave Craig. Big time, JB, the Packers pull it out like good teams always do. Kevin Stimke will punt now for the injured Shane Leckler, who's battling a quad. Bobby Ingram is deep to catch. He waits for a fair catch, and he does about the 34-yard line. When we come back, Matt Hasselbeck, we'll see if he can put together another good one as we're tied up here in Oakland. In case you've just joined us, here's what's going on. Gannon with a nice drive, capped it off with an eight-yard touchdown to Tim Brown. Hasselback, a nice drive of his own. He hit Atula Mealy for the touchdown, and that's where we're at at 7-7. Hasselback looking down the field. He's got it complete, Atula Mealy again, and the Raiders are getting opened up in the middle of the field, Dave Craig, and with all those new starters on defense, the guys we talked about they brought in, you think maybe they're a little out of sync? Well, one thing they are, there's Sean Alexander happy. A lot of play action has been <laughs> used because of the fact that they want to stop Sean Alexander from gaining 266 yards. And right there, Derek Gibson, the strong safety, getting his first start, sucked up on the play action, allowing the tight end to get behind him. Hawks in a four-wide-out formation. Hand off. Alexander, nothing. Romanowski's in on the hit. And I'm sure he'll be seeing a lot of Romanowski, another reason they brought in a guy like that to deal with the running game. Well, they brought in a lot of players. You got Rod Woodson back there, an experienced free safety. Bill Romanowski came over from the Broncos, which still to me is absurd that you came from the Broncos to the Raiders, but he, wanted to, he wanted to come here and help Mr. Davis win another championship. No gain on the plate, second down and 10. Two tight end formation for the Seahawks. complete balls out that was Jeremy Stevens the rookie now the question is did he have possession and the official is pointing that the Raiders have the ball but the Raiders aren't acting like they have the ball no he's saying third down Corin Robinson did a great job of hustling over to recover the fumble very much like Michigan did against Washington in that game but <laughs> Corin Robinson did a good job of hustling you can see Jeremy Stevens, he makes the catch right there. And then from over here, we're gonna see Corn Robinson get on the ball first. Good hustle right there and good awareness by the second year player, Corn Robinson. So they got four on the play, third and six. The quick hitch looks outside again to Stevens. Stevens looks as though he had trouble with it, but he's brought down immediately by Romanowski. He got three, but three won't be enough and they'll have to punt. That's one of the things I was asking Mike Holmgren, are you going to play it close to the vest? And third and six, you'd like to throw the ball a little further than that. you got a smart guy, Bill Romanowski like that. He did not let his man get free, stopped him short of the first down, forcing the Seahawks to punt. So two big plays by Bill Romanowski leads to the punt. Jeff Spiegel, 15 years in the league, will punt to the rookie, Philip Buchanan, who stands with his heels on the 10 and shouldn't back up. He won't. And that ball lands exactly where Fiegel wants it at about the three-yard line. A 41-yard punt. We'll be back after this. 
Raiders owner, Mr. Al Davis, the owner since 1966. And you know, Dave, when Mr. Davis calls you on the phone, it can be a very interesting conversation, as Bill Romanowski knows. Well, Bill Romanowski, he definitely wanted to, to come to the Raiders, and we'll see what that conversation sounded like in a second. So Rich Gannon will take over deep in his own territory. Play action, looking down the field, in and out of the hands of Roland Williams. And let's lead to this Bill Romanowski reaction. I called Mr. Davis up on the phone. I got his secretary. And I said, uh, left a message for Mr. Davis. And I just said, um, tell Mr. Davis that I want to help him win another Super Bowl. And uh, she gave him the message. Then she called me back on the phone. I didn't get the call, but she left the message that Mr. Davis thinks she'd look good in silver and black. In other words, come play for me. And here's a guy that's playing. That's Charlie Garner. He gets a swing pass and turns it into a big gainer. He'll pick up the first down. Pick up a 13. Charlie Garner's a consummate. He's very similar to a Marshall Falk. He just runs a little swing route to the right. Rich Gannon's looking downfield. He knows he's in his end zone, so he wants to get rid of that ball quick. He sees Charlie Garner out there, turns a short pass into a long gain, a first down, and especially the important thing is getting it outside from their own end zone. Tyrone Wheatley checks in at the running back position for Garner. Gannon looking, flushing out of the pocket, in and out of the hands of Richie. And holding on to passes has not come easy for the Raiders. One of the things that's difficult about that is that ball comes through, comes through defensive and offensive linemen, and Rich Gannon sees him real clear. And then by the time John Richie sees it, you know, it's right on him. He should have caught the ball, no doubt about it. But, you know, those are the tough things for running backs. If he's a fullback, he's a blocking back, but John can catch that ball and should have caught that one. It looks like the Raiders' offense has shut down a little bit or slowed down a little bit. They've gotten out of the no huddle. Maybe they should go back to it. Williams in motion. Gannon to pass again. Pressure inside the middle screen to Wheatley, and nothing close. Tackled immediately by the double Harvard major, Isaiah Kazavinsky, who we've heard a ton from in preseason. Isaiah Kazavinsky is very interesting. His, his dad is a janitor back east. Uh, he's from Endicott, New York, and he got his degree, double degree, and he wasn't able to do it because he wanted to stay with Mike Holmgren at minicamp, mini yeah. and he went back there and had his dad walk down the aisle at Harvard as a janitor. That had to be very impressive. He had to be a proud dad of his son, Isaiah. He said, my dad is a janitor all his life. He'll get a lot more out of it than I would. Third down, Gannon in trouble. Here comes the heat, and Rich Gannon will go down. I, uh, Rich Gannon almost fumbled that ball back there when he was in the pocket. It slipped out of his hand a little bit, so the important thing was that he, he regained the ball, but you got to give a lot of credit to the Seahawks secondary. They're shutting down the Tim Browns and the Jerry Rices. Rich, Rich Gannon is standing back here an awful lot, trying to get the ball downfield, and the ball almost comes out of his hands. He barely hangs on to it and was able to hold on to the ball, but he still got a sack. The defense got to him, and, uh, you know, that's a, it's a tough thing right now for the Raiders' offense to get any passes downfield because of the secondary of the Seahawks. A loss of eight. Marcus Bell is in on the initial tackle. Here's the punt return. Here's Ingram. Ingram dances, and then the music stops at the 35. There's a flag down as Randy Jordan is in on the hit, and a Raider is also down. 56 yards on the punt. Zach Crockett is the player down. Zach Crockett, the backup fullback. Holding on the receiving team during the return, number 29. That's a 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, Seattle. That's Curtis Fuller who got the flag. You can see right there it is. I mean, he's all over him. That's a penalty. When you know you're out in wide open space, Curtis Fuller can't do that type of thing. The referees, it makes it very easy on them. They would have had the ball 10 yards up. In a game like this, when it's 7-7, seven to seven, field, field position is so important. So we're going to step away. We're knotted up here in Oakland. The Seahawks have answered. We'll be back. 
Welcome back. Let's take a look at what exactly happened to Zach Crockett. He comes in on the tackle there. And Zach Crockett is up. We've got him on the stretcher. And now put him onto the cart. He gets a round of applause here from the Raider fans. And we'll try to get you an update as to his situation as soon as possible. So right now the Raiders will be on defense. Matt Hasselback, who came out in the initial drive, Dave, and had a very, very good outing. Wasn't protected like we thought by Mike Holmgren. We saw a little bit from Sean Alexander, but you know what? The Raiders got after Sean Alexander. They have stopped Sean Alexander, but they have not been able to stop Matt Hasselbeck, and he's shown a lot of poise and composure back in the pocket. The Raiders in a 3-4 look. Three down linemen, four linebackers. Hand off to Alexander, and he's caught behind the line. Barton on the plate. Let's go to James Brown in Los Angeles. See of Denver doing his best to get his teammates confidence. Here he's hooking up with Rod Smith on a seven yard strike. That made it seven nothing and a Jason Elam field goal has made it 10 nothing. Make it now 10 three over St. Louis. Back to Ron Pitts and Dave Craig. Thank you very much JV. They got a, a burner going on there. We got one right here. A loss of two on the play. And off again Alexander, and Alexander constantly stops his feet as soon as he gets the ball because of the Raider penetration, Dave Craig. And the good thing about the Raiders right now is they're switching up their defense. They went from a 4-3 early. Now they're in a 3-4 defense. It adds a lot of confusion. One, two, three, down linemen. Howie Long's old number, Warren by Perella. And you got four <laughs> linebackers in there. They're doing different things, different schemes. And the reason that works and is effective is it confuses the offensive line of the Seattle Seahawks. You don't know who to count as a linebacker and a defensive lineman. It's difficult to get him in the running game and in pass protection. So they're going to go back and forth on this to confuse the Seahawks linemen. 24 seconds left here in the quarter. Third and 11. Hasselback from the shotgun looking down the field. Here comes the heat. He gets it away. The question is, was he in the grasp? It won't be an issue, apparently. Here comes Larry Nimmer. It was a sack. He was in the grasp, and that will bring on a punting situation for the Seattle Seahawks. Tempo has a lot to do with a football game, and the Raiders want to get the tempo back for them. They've done it successfully by changing from a 4-3 to a 3-4 defense, stopping the run twice and making a sack. A loss of seven. We'll bring on the punt by Lindell, but not before the end of the quarter. So we had a lot of fireworks, and we're all tied up. The Raiders seven, the Seahawks seven, and a lot of action left to go. We'll be back to Oakland right after this. Welcome back to Oakland, 7-7. We're awaiting the punt by Jeff Beagles, back deep. Rookie returner, Philip Buchanan. And I was a little surprised, Dave, when Jeff Beagles told us they planned to punt away from a rookie. Well, Philip Buchanan was NCAA special teams player of the year and was one of the top three finalists for the Mosi Tatupu special teams player award. So he can do things, be dangerous when he gets the football on his well, He's got a chance to be dangerous now. He cuts up inside, makes one spin, got across the 40. We've got a flag down. Tackle on the play by Curtis Fuller. And let's check out the flag. And the call goes against the Raiders. 48-yard punt by Fiegels. Defense, number 22 lined up in the neutral zone. Defense offside, five-yard penalty, will re-kick. And that's the veteran, Terrence Shaw, the free agent from New England. You don't expect that, and Bill Callahan doesn't like that. 
Raiders have been known to always have little penalties, you know, the offside. <laughs> a lot of little penalties. Anything. I mean, and it just keeps adding up. And, of course, then it en ended up in the uh, the Super Bowl where they have a call go against them. So they have penalties, and the referee looks into the TV monitor. Everything kind of seems to go against the Raiders. And even talking to some of the Raider players, they scratch their heads and say, you know, sometimes we wonder if we don't get more than our fair share of suspect calls. The Al Davis mystique lingers even amongst the players. They said they would hope the NFL wouldn't be like that, but uh, sometimes they don't know. So Fiegel will do it again, and Brooke Buchanan will be deep again. Uh, not a good one. An end-over-end -end punt. Short. Buchanan's got room. He's inside. He's got through the first wall to the outside. Breaks two tackles before he gets across the 40 to about the 38-yard line. Willie Williams makes the stop. 37-yard punt. That is a prime example of why you want to kick it away from Philip Buchanan. He goes north and south very quick. You know, I didn't believe Fiegels when he said they punt away from him, and I didn't agree with it, but I'm starting to understand their point of view now. Well, I've seen Philip Buchanan in the preseason, and when he gets that ball in his hand, even at the University of Miami, he gets up field quick. He's looking for the end zone. I mean, Bill Callahan said this kid is a gym rat. He loves to play sports. He just happened to pick football. When he gets that ball in his hands, he knows what to do with it. Lost his lid, but that's why you got to have a good haircut. 22 yards on the return. 22 yards, it doesn't matter what your hair looks like. <laughs> First and 10 Raiders. Play action pass. Gannon looking deep. He's got a man deep. That's Tim Brown. Oh, in and out of the hands. And it looks like Sean Springs came over at the last moment and got a hand on it. That was a great play by Sean Springs because Timmy Brown did have a step on the secondary. And again, play action coming into effect here. You fake the handoff. Good fake right there by Rich Gannon. He looks down deep, sees that the weak safety bit up just enough to enable Tim Brown to get back there. I'm not sure it got Whoa. tipped all that much. Tim Brown could have caught that. He's looking at himself. There's a penalty on the play. Flag on the play. Tim Brown is very, very much known for catching touchdown passes against Seattle. That's, he's got 14 against Seattle, which ties him for the most versus any other opponent other than Denver, maybe. So the call goes against the Seahawks. It will be first and five, and there's Charlie Garner. Charlie Garner busts inside now. Charlie Garner picks up 13. Because of the fact that Matt Stinchcomb and Barrett Robbins and Frank Middleton, the interior part of the line for Charlie Garner's there, they also bring uh, Jerry Porter over, and they keep faking those reverses. It takes a safety, an extra secondary man in from stopping the running game, but the interior line of the Raiders is very effective right now. Raiders in and out of the huddle very, very fast. High formation. Garner, look at the hole. Garner press the fight. Touchdown, Charlie Garner. Up the gut for 20 yards in pay dirt for the Raiders. And Dave, you knew it was coming. Well, that's twice in a row now. Chad Eaton did a lot of talking about the Raiders, but they are running right up the middle. There's Chad Eaton. I don't want to talk bad about him, but I'll tell you what. There's the defensive line, and the Raiders are just manhandling the defensive line. Charlie Garner, Ron Pitts, anybody could have run through there. I don't know if we would have had a speed to get past Marcus Robertson. Great line, great hole by the offensive line of the Raiders. Janikowski will add one more, and we're 14-7. So everybody's putting together drives. This is an exciting one. We'll be back right after this. The Raiders scoring drive, two plays, 38 yards, all set up after that Buchanan punt return. Janikowski kick is very deep, and Maurice Morris won't bring it out. Well, let's go back to that Charlie Garner touchdown, Dave. Well, that it was a huge one. It makes it easy on a quarterback when your interior line right there can blow out guys like Chad Eaton. You know, you got Barrett Roberts, Frank Middleton. Matt Stinchcomb, they're doing the job. He does not get touched and just guts that defense. That makes it real easy for a quarterback and very demoralizing for a defense and for Steve Sindwell. 
uh, Swindell of the uh, Seattle Seahawks, the, the uh, defensive coordinator. Raiders back in that 34 defense. First and 10, I hand off to Sean Alexander. We've got flags down, and Alexander has been getting hit a lot early. Larry Nimmers will give us the call. Prior to the snap, full start on the offense. Right guard, five yard penalty, still first down. That's Chris Gray, number 62, who gets flagged for leaving a little early. Please set the game clock to 13.51. You know, big question, Dave, was could the Raider defense get on Thank the you. same page fast enough? We talked to Rod Woodson about that the other night. Well, we did talk to him and Bill Romanowski says, we, we won't be on the same page communication-wise, but we do have athletes and players, and if we just play football, we'll be fine. First and 15 for Hasselbeck. Play action, looking down the field. Checks down, that's Corin Robinson. Robinson looks like he was going out of bounds, then takes it right to Charles Woodson. Woodson's not having much of it. That's Woodson laying the wood to Corn Robinson along with some help from Cor uh, Bill Romanowski, but that shows how physical it can be down there on the sidelines. Wood and a little plastic along with that, too. You don't know what Romanowski has inside of him. <laughs> True. Second down, here comes the blitz by the Raiders. Woodson gets picked up on the blitz. Hasselbeck has time, the ball's knocked out. It's a free ball, let's see how they call it. Oh no, here we go again. Tony Bryant comes around the corner, knocks it out, and I hate to say it, folks, but was the arm still in motion? They might have time to review that if they want to, but I'll tell you what, Max Strong did a good job of picking up Rod Woodson. We'll see Max Strong right here in the top left of your oh, corner. He did. And then Woodson comes from right there. That's Ooh. how you pick up a blitz. That's how you stop teams from blitzing. And Abling has to get more time. But they still didn't stop the end rushing up from the Raiders. Well, the Raiders won't even bother to try to challenge the incomplete pass. Hasselback on the hoof. Nothing downfield, so he gets up. Hasselback is upset. He throws the ball down at Napoleon Harris. So the third down play results in four yards, but not enough for a first down. Let's take a second look at this play. His arm was going th forward. Matt Hasselbeck was making an attempt. You can see his arm following through. The official saw it all the way. He blew his whistle right away. That made it not reviewable. Good call by the official. Definitely his arm was going forward. The Beagles will punt again to Philip Buchanan. Buchanan had 22 yards on the return last series and set up the touchdown. He fair catches this one at the 32-yard line. We'll step away. When we come back. The Raiders will take over first and 10. Welcome back to Oakland. The Raiders up by seven. We're going to take a look again after this play, we'll take a look again at that incomplete pass by Matt Hasselbeck. Tyrone Wheatley takes the handoff. Gannon to Tim Brown, who's wide open, who can still get up and run. He's out across the 50 to about the 48. Reggie Tung on the play, but not after a pickup of 20 yards. The Raiders back into that hurry-up offense that they started the game with that gave the Seahawks trouble. And the thing about that, David, you know, you got to get out of the huddle fast so you can make your audibles on the line of scrimmage. Exactly. And he's got plenty of time. He's still got 13 seconds on the 25-second uh, clock. Gannon looking inside. Nothing there. Tries to dump it over the middle. Mondrell Fulcher. And Fulcher's having a rough day so far. Mondrell Fulcher is having a tough time. So is Isaiah Kazavinsky. He's not quite, he's vacating his area, not only on running plays, but also when the tight end comes over the middle. He's reacting too quickly to things and not letting the game flow. Isaiah Kazavinsky really getting his first seasonal start 
replacing LeVon Kirkland, who was let go in the offseason. So you got to believe there's a lot of things going through his mind. And he's already 100 miles an hour anyway. Well, even if you're from Harvard, it's a <laughs> tough game to quickly <laughs> grasp in the NFL. Gannon will pass again. Looks, has plenty of time, dumps it to Wheatley. Wheatley's pushed out of bounds by Sean Springs, but not before he picks up a couple. And he's very close to the first down. That was the key, Ron, like you just said. He had plenty of time. Oh. He went from the first, second, third to the fourth oh. receiver, finding Tyrone Wheatley. And that tells you the offensive line for the Raiders is doing a great job. And the Seahawks defensive line is not getting quite there. Number 70 reports eligible for Oakland. You see Rich Gannon all that time. He's standing back there oh. finding, finally, his fourth receiver in the progression. I mean, that's the way you draw it up as an offensive coordinator. You never expected to get thrown to Tyrone, but if you got that much time, you'll find him. Pickup of nine. And now here comes Tyrone, and that's a low. Tyrone Wheatley busts across the middle, and he'll get the first down. Tongue and Lucas bring him down, but he got 11 before they got there. And one thing Tyrone Wheatley will do, he'll lower the shoulder and put a hurt on you at 235 pounds. Well, he runs this behind Lincoln Kennedy, and he gets his knees going up in the air, a la John Brockington of the old days back in old school well, football. Back there. But he gets up there behind Lincoln Kennedy and John Ritchie. Great running and great blocking at the point of attack. First down, Jerry Rice on the end of the round. Fakes handoff to Wheatley. They've run that play several times already. And you know sooner or later, uh, Jerry Rice is going to get the ball on that backside. Well, even if he doesn't get the football, the defensive ends for the uh, Seattle Seahawks, Lamar King or Antonio Cochran, depends which side you're coming to, and the safety, they keep looking at Jerry Rice, and that leaves big holes in there, big voids that not only has Charlie Garner run through, but Tyrone Wheatley's been able to run through him as well. So the fake reverse takes two or three defensive players out of the position. I, sp I suppose if you've seen Jerry Rice, I would leave too. <laughs> Second down and six. Gannon, look at the time. He slides, still has time, still has time. Pump fakes, goes over the middle, complete touchdown to Charlie Garner. He was close to being over the line, but that much time. Rich Gannon has entirely too much time to throw the football. Garner is just waiting for something to happen. Very effective drive. Rich Gannon gets outside of the pocket, looks patiently, looks, makes it look so simple. Marcus Bell trying to get over there, but too late. Janikowski on for the extra point. Not much of a rush, and it's 21-7 Raiders. The Seahawks have to get it going. Welcome back to Oakland. The Raiders up 21-7. And that kick is hammered to the corner, taken by Max Strong. He ties the strong arm his way inside, but he's down at about the 15, 14 yards on the return. And talk about time, Dave Craig. This is ridiculous. Well, I'll tell you what. The secondary for the Raiders has done a good, I mean, for the Seahawks, has done a good job. The Raiders, uh, receivers are having a tough time getting open. When you're allowed to throw it to your fourth and fifth receiver and find him downfield, that means you've got a lot of time. Mobility is definitely there with Rich Gannon, but the defensive line for the Seahawks has to get there. First and 10 Seahawks. Corin Robinson comes out of the backfield. Quick out to Daryl Jackson. He's got it. He's got a couple before he's brought down by Charles Woodson. A quick update on the injury to Zach Bronson. Zach Crockett. He's been taken to a local hospital. It is a neck injury, but he does have movement and feeling in his extremities. Once again, he does have movement and feeling in his extremities. So that, Dave Craig, is extremely good news so far. Hasselback looking to go deep on the outside, knocked away by Corey James. He was looking for Corey, Corey Robinson. The ball was a little underthrown and inside. Well, Torrey James is right on him. Right here we go. There they are. Torrey James is running stride for side with Corey Robinson. When Corey Robinson looks back, 
Corey James looks back. Excellent technique by a cornerback right there. He gets his head turned around. No, no doubt about a pass interference call or anything like that. Great play by Torrey James. I still think, Dave, that ball's got to be up over the outside shoulder of Corn Robinson to give him a better chance. That would have helped. Third and three. Hasselbeck makes an adjustment. He hands off. Alexander. Alexander stacked up again. And he is literally going into the big guys, the guys that the Raiders brought in to do just that, Perella and Sam Adams, and stop the run. Well, we talked about the big guys, and I'll tell you what, Perella, right here, all of these big fellas. I, I wish I could draw a bigger circle for them, <laughs> but they are doing the job up front. Perella gets around his guys. Um, Napoleon Harrison or Sam Adams, I mean, they've made some acquisitions to shut down the run and stop Sean Alexander, and they have done just that so far today. The Eagles will punt again to Philip Buchanan, and Buchanan has pretty decent returns on the last two outings. This one has a little hang time on it. He'll have to fair catch, and he does. So that's where the Raiders will take over at the 32-yard line. They're up by 14. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Oakland. Raiders up 21 to 7. Tyrone Wheatley, Charlie Gardner are the running backs today for the Raiders. But I tell you, one of the scariest running backs of all time was Bo Jackson. And we'll talk a little bit more about him after this play. I know Dave Craig. I've met his thigh <laughs> up close and personal a couple times. I got to see it run by me. Complete to Tim Brown out near the 42-yard line. And speaking of Bo Jackson, here he is, November 30th, 1987. You remember the Monday night game. You remember what he did to Boz? And this is what he did to the guys in the secondary that could run. He ran faster to me coming out for introductions than I ran. I was standing right over there, and I could just feel that whoosh of Bo Jackson flying by me. And good thing there was a tunnel open there because he kept going through that as well. 221 Great yards, nine, <laughs> the one yard touchdown run there. And here goes Wheatley. He may have got nine inches. Chad Eaton scrapes over and makes the play. And Dave, what's going on inside? You know, we thought the Seattle Seahawks offensive line would have the problem. They don't have Walter Jones, you know, the big tackle on the outside. Yeah, they had to move some people around. They just brought in Jerry Wunsch. But it's the defensive line of the Seahawks that's given up the big run. It is the defensive line of the Seahawks that's causing them problems. Otherwise, the Seahawks are playing pretty good. But they have to, this is a critical drive, a critical part of the game right here because they don't want them to get ahead 28 or 24 to 7. Very critical series for the Seahawks. Randy Jordan, 28, checks in at running back for the Raiders. Gannon checks out of that play into something else. Looking to wide open is Jerry Porter. Smart, smart quarterback. Third down and two, third down and three. He had one play called, audible to another play. You have to have a lot of confidence, not only in your receivers, but in yourself to be able to make that call. Good job by Rich Gannon, and Jerry Porter got to be a part of that offense right there. Third and three. yards on the pickup, and it makes you wonder, is this check with me a new thing for the Raiders that we'll see for a long time. Oh, I think they've always had it. Rich Gannon has been able to do it, and to go for it on third down, his coaches have a lot of confidence in him to let him do that. Play action pass. He looks deep. Checks off underneath, complete. That's the tight end, Roland Williams. And Williams gets in on the action. And there just doesn't seem to be anybody like an Anthony Simmons in the middle of the field. That's why it seems wide open. Well, they also miss a John Randall coming up there being able to put pressure on a guy like Rich Gannon. you got to give a lot of credit to Barry Sims and Matt Stinchcomb, number 65, 74, and Barrett Robbins, the center. And Frank Middleton, the right guard, and Lincoln Kennedy, the right tackle. They are giving Rich Gannon all sorts of time to get that ball downfield. Gannon, 9 of 15, 106 yards and two touchdowns. Timeout, Oakland. That's their first team timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. You know, a game has its ebbs and flows. Early, there was a lot of energy. It's the opening game, and boom, the Raiders go down with their two-minute offense. And then the Seahawks come back and have an exciting fourth and one, and they score. And then we said the game settled down a little bit now, but the Raiders have had two scoring drives since then, and that's been the change in the momentum and the, uh, you know, the whole momentum of the game is demoralizing for the Seahawks. 
and the Raiders are fired up and playing with a lot of confidence, and they're in a rhythm. And what Rich Gannon has, above all else, is a lot of time to throw the football. He's got a lot of time and a lot of weapons to throw that football, too. When you throw the ball to Charlie Garner, he caught like 72 passes last year and was ranked third on his team. And we can know who the other two players were, Tim Brown and Jerry Rice, that were ahead of him. So he's got a lot of weapons. If that offensive line gives him time, he can do the job. Really in the backfield with Richie. Gannon flips this out to Wheatley. Wheatley tries to run over one and almost did, but Chad Brown is able to bring him down. He'll pick up six. And that's another thing I'm noticing. It doesn't seem like much, but the gains are getting five, six, eight, then they'll hit a big one. They're chewing up the clock and the field on the Seahawks. Well, Tyrone Wheatley has come in in great shape. He knows Charlie Garner's there. He's worked on catching the ball. He's a little bit lighter. Great athlete. He made four yards after Chad Brown made contact with him, so that's good to see as a quarterback. Good job by Tyrone Wheatley. Raiders are now approaching that red zone. And off inside again to Wheatley. And it'll be about another four yards. And enough for a first down. And it's the same play. The end around, handoff inside. Here's Jerry Rice. When he comes in motion, he will take a defensive end or a linebacker will go out to look at him. A cornerback will go over there in a safety. You're taking three guys out of 11 players on your defense just to follow Jerry Rice. That leaves you only with eight players. That why, that's why that play is so success, successful, and that's why they keep doing it. The secondary of the Seahawks is following Jerry Rice, a defensive end or a linebacker. It just makes it difficult for Seahawks, the Seahawks' defense. And one of the things that Steve Sidwell, the defensive coordinator for the Seahawks, told us as the Raiders pick up that first down was that we have to get Rich Gannon dirty. we got to get him on the ground, and they've been able to do everything but that. Well, Mike Holmgren's got to be standing over going, what can we do? Rich Gannon's good enough when he gets a little bit of pressure on him, but if he doesn't get any pressure on him, the time of possession's going up, the yards are going up, you're not getting the football, and they hold the football for a whole first half like this. It makes it very difficult. You can see the discrepancy in the yards. That's major. This is Wheatley. Chad Eaton ropes him up. And you have to wonder, Dave, what will be... What will this year be like for the Seahawks coming into this new division? You know, they won't see well, the this teams year they've seen in the past, the San Diegos and the, and the Raiders on a, a two-time-a-year deal. They'll see the 49ers, and they'll see the Rams and the, and the Cardinals. That will be a lot different for them, but right now, they're used to seeing the Raiders, and they do not want to see the Raiders early in this first half trying to go ahead by three touchdowns. And it will pass. Here comes the pressure, and he'll go, nearly go down. He got it away. That's Brandon Mitchell. And Larry Nimbers came on and said he was out of the pocket. So as long as he gets that ball to or near the line of scrimmage or beyond, he won't be an intentional grounding call. But well, great the, penetration by Mitchell. One of the first times they were able to get some pressure, pressure on him, Matt Stinchcomb let him get inside, and Brandon Mitchell was able to, to get after Rich Gannon and make a move. A good play, though, by Rich Gannon to save about 12, 14 yards and averting the sack. Look at the current drive by the Raiders. Ninth play of the drive, and here's a handoff. Jordan, is he in? Touchdown, Raiders. And they've got a flag down, and it looked like the Seattle defense was just kind of watching. Defense, defense, number 91 lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. Maybe they should have been watching. 12 yards on the touchdown run by Randy Jordan. That was the classic. Lombardi sweep right there. They got everybody around, down, down, and around. It was a great sweep, well executed. And you didn't even see any white shirts in the frame. It's almost like the Seahawks thought the play had been blown dead or something. Well, they, they, they've been playing like that up front with their defensive line and linebackers. They've been being manhandled by the front four or five of the Oakland Raiders. Janikowski will come on to add one more. Yes. 28-7 Raiders. That scoring drive. Nine plays, 
67 yards, and they did it in four minutes, and we've got a flag down. Defense, number 24, lined up in the neutral zone. The extra point is good. The five-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. And that's Sean Springs, and how much you want to bet that Mike Holmgren drills his team on where the neutral zone is this week. You're going to see Matt Stinchcomb. He's going to make a cut block right there. That enables him to get through. John Ritchie, he makes another play on Ken Lucas. That's just what you do. That's the perfect design for a football play right there, enabling the Raiders to take it in. You had great blocks by everybody on the offensive line. And when Jordan made that turn, made that cut, the white shirts just disappeared. Was, and after the initial force, there was nobody there. Great cut blocks at the point of attack. You had people black all over that white of the Seattle Seahawks. That is designed very much like Vince Lombardi used to do it with Elijah Pitts, with John Brockington and all those. You remember those old guys? I do. I grew up watching the Packers, man, and that's why I still love this game. Well, the best story I've heard is how uh, Chad Eaton, <laughs> when he was in seventh grade, you were like his hero, man. You got your autograph. Well, I'll tell you, it does make you feel a little bit old, but they still do remember that you used to play a little bit. And Chad, I gave him an autograph when I was six or seven. He remembers the Raiders, Seahawks rivals, and he probably got carried away on television <laughs> or on the radio, whatever he was doing, and the Raiders didn't forget that. Janikowski boots it away. This will go deep into the end zone, almost into the bay. Seahawks will take over on the 20. Well, there's some new rules in the league, and one of them is the pylon. It is now inbounds and in the end zone. He's in there. Where is the ball? And the question is, does he still have possession when he breaks the plane of that end zone? Well, as long as the ball crossed the plane of the end zone, the pylon rule didn't come into too much effect there. But had he touched the pylon with the ball and it crossed the plane, that would have been a touchdown. You can see where it is right there in the end zone. Rich Gannon, by the way, 13 to 20, 155 yards and two touchdowns. He's fairly comfortable today. And this guy here, Matt Hasselbeck, has to turn it up a notch. He'll do it right off the bat. Throws complete. Corn Robinson. Robinson Dance gets away from Napoleon Harris and makes a nice pickup out of it. And these two receivers, as everyone in the Seattle area has talked about, will have to be big this year. I can't think of a better time than now for them to get big. 10 yards on the pickup. Well, the guy they worried about, Matt Hasselbeck, he's done his job. Hey, he's been okay. He's done his job. They, the Raiders have said, we're going to have you beat us, Matt Hasselbeck, and he hasn't been able to do that, but he's been effective in the passing game. Seahawks in a four-wide-out formation. Definitely thinking pass. It is. Complete again to Robinson, but he drops it. He had it and actually looked like he took a few steps but wasn't able to pull it in. Now, Corn did a good job recovering the fumble earlier by Jeremy Stevens, but you know what? He's need to get back in that ball in case it is a fumble. And we've got a flag down. Nimmer's preliminary call against the Seahawks. Hassel back on the day. Holding. Offense number 61. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. That'll push him back. That's Robbie Tobeck, the center. Hasselback, 10 of 13 for 82 yards and a touchdown. So as you say, Dave, he's been okay. There's your center right there. He's got his hands on people, but you know what? Sometimes, I mean, there's holding a lot. I don't see too much with that particular play right there. He's in there trying to block two guys, and he got, might have got his hand out stretched a little bit. That one they could have let go. Three wide stay on the field for the Seahawks. The handoff to Alexander looking outside. This is not where he likes to run, and it's evident. Pushed out of bounds by Torrey James. He did mention that talking to us last night. You asked him, he said, where do you like to run? And he was, he came with a quick response. I like to run inside the tackles. I do not like to run sideways, and that's what the Raiders have done. They have not allowed him to run inside the tackles, and when they make him run sideways, they get to the out of bounds. He has nowhere to go. Clearly a different runner when he's not in that eye formation and not running inside like you say, Dave Craig. Well, that helps when you have Perella, guys like Sam Adams in there, Rock Coleman. Slamming. Exactly. Second and long. Jackson goes in motion. Quick out to Jackson. 
caught but hit immediately and knocked down by Charles Woodson. And Charles Woodson claims to finally be 100% healthy, and at 200 pounds, he is definitely one of the premier corners in the NFL. A pickup of only three. We'll be back right after this. We're back in Oakland. The Raiders having everything their way. Matt Hasselback in a shotgun looking for some time, and here comes the rush. We've got a flag down, and play is stopped. And, and I see that movement. I see that 75 down there. That reminds me of Howie Long. The big legs and motor always running. It's hard not Prior to look to at that snap, number. Full start offense, number 77. Five yard penalty, still third down. And that is big Floyd Womack. Fourth round draft pick last year. Struggles. Floyd Womack up on the top left of your screen. Just leaning back a little bit too fast and he can't stop that weight from going forward. And Referee's got him for that. It's five more yards. It's a very crucial down again for the Seahawks because they have to try to get the ball to a first down. If they don't, the Raiders get the ball back with two timeouts and Rich Gannon at the helm. Third and 19. I'm not sure what a helm is, but that's Rich Gannon is under the center. It sounded good. It sounded important. <laughs> Over the middle, complete, but it'll be well short of a first down. The rookie, Jeremy Stevens, has the ball, we've got another flag down. That's deep in the backfield, either holding or roughing the pass. Right, that's what I saw, Trace Armstrong back there. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 93. 15 yards will be added to the end of the completed catch. First down. That's, yeah. that's, and big. that's a big one. That's a big one. As Larry Nimmer said, 15 tacked on to the end of Trace the catch. Trace is right there. And he's coming up. We'll see what happens at the end of this play. But Trace Armstrong is putting pressure. The ball is already delivered. Yeah. You know, maybe he didn't get a good view of him. <laughs> now, Dave, wait a minute. You're a quarterback. I'm a defensive back. That was that was rough in the passer, huh? <laughs> I, I just want to know what Howie Long is thinking right now. I think he'd agree with that one. I mean, the ball was delivered, and Trace has to know that. <laughs> Regardless, it's first and ten. Near midfield for the Seahawks. Pressure right away. Hasselbeck throws it down. And he's going to claim he's throwing at a receiver. The Lawrence Grant had the pressure. Now they talked him into it. He did not get outside of the tackle. <laughs> I, I think is what so. this is going to be. We'll see. Larry Nimmers has got a little smirk on his face. Larry didn't throw the flag right away. He's waiting to get talked into it by one of the other officials. There's no foul in the play. It was reported that number 38 was in the vicinity. No Ooh. foul. Second down. In the vicinity. Boy, the Raiders, they just got to wonder. They just had a call against them. Now, you get technically between where the tackles were. He was not outside of the tackle box. And they're saying that, I don't know, 38 was somebody be was in there. But, you know, Max Strong, I could barely see him on the monitor. Maybe we need a bigger monitor. Here's Sean Alexander. He needs outside. And Alexander finally rips one off. He's close to the first down. I don't think he got it. But that's probably his first really good run of the day. Well, that was the first opportunity that he had to get outside and see some daylight. The focus from the Raiders when we talked to him on Friday afternoon and again on Saturday was we do not want to have a repeat performance. They were embarrassed by Sean Alexander up in Seattle when a guy gains 266 yards against you and you get to face him again, you want to shut him down. They were not only embarrassed, they were flat out mad about that whole thing. And don't forget, right before overtime in that New England game, the Patriots drove down the field a ways. Hasselbeck will take this one on his own. He's got the first down. The clock is running, 135 and counting. Hasselback is trying to hurry up, get a call. He, he should and have get a guys call. lined up. Matt, Matt Hasselback should not even look to the sideline, just have a play in his own mind because you can't wait for Mike Homer to call every play for you. Seahawks have one timeout left. They're saving that one. Hasselback over the middle, strong. Strong arms across the 35 to about the 33 yard line. Now the good thing is he's got the ear pieces in his helmet, so Mike can quickly say a play. And that's what he's doing right now to Matt Hasselbeck. 
After that start off in the shotgun, walk under the center, looking for the deep out. It's complete to Corn Robinson. And that'll move the change. Looked as though a little bit of discussion as to whether or not it was complete, but the referee pointing at the ground confirms 10-yard pickup. 40 seconds and counting here before halftime. And this could be a review. Larry Nimmer stops the action. The only problem with the review thing is 15 seconds did go off the clock, so they have to be aware of that, the officials as well. And it would have to be from the booth. Remember, under two minutes, the respective coaches cannot make the, re the review request. Well, we'll try to see what, in fact, they are looking at, the officials anyway. He appears to have the ball. We will review whether the pass was caught or not. There well, to, to me, Dave, it looks like a catch. Yeah, there has to be conclusive evidence that he didn't catch it. They have to show that. Different After reviewing receivers. the play, the Seattle receiver caught the ball, cradled it in his stomach, and then was touched down by contact. Then the ball came out, so it is a catch. The play will stand. It's called on the field. First down, Seattle. So Larry Nimmers clears all that up. Took a little time off the game to do that, but we've got it straight. So the Seahawks have a first down at the 24-yard line. And we've got another flag, and play is stopped again. Alex Bannister, the receiver down at the bottom, jumped before the ball was snapped. Full start on the offense, number 85. Since the clock was running, and it's inside of one minute, the foul occurred at 34 seconds. So we'll set the game clock at 24 seconds. That's a 10 second runoff. And we'll wind the clock on the ready. Of course, the reason for that, the reason for that is you don't purposely go off sides to buy time when you don't have any timeouts left. Exactly. And the penalty is a 10 second runoff when you're behind. So the Seahawks get pushed back. That's the back to throw again. This one's complete. Now you should call timeout, I would think, Matt Hasselback. There you go. Neely. He's got it at about timeout. the 22. Seattle. And it took a while. That's their third and final timeout. Well, Hasselback to call timeout. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Second and seven for Hasselback. Going to the end zone. Looking for Bannister, that's not even close. Well, you don't want to question a guru or a genius of Mike Holmwood, but if I'm the Raiders, I'm thinking they're going to go deep. They don't have any timeouts left. Run down there like you're going deep and break it off. And you still got nine seconds left throwing a, a comeback. And then you got a chance one more time for the end right. zone. Just a thought. So this will be a field goal attempt by Ryan Lindell. Lindell. And that is 39-yard line. That's where he'll kick. He's at his 29. It'll be a 39-yard field goal attempt. Timeout, Oakland. And the Raiders put a little ice That's on it. That's their second team timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. And I thought it was funny what Jeff Fiegel said about Ryan Lindell last night. Lindell has a lot of things going on in his head concerning <laughs> kicking. Sometimes he asks himself, you know, I really think I'm left-footed when he gets off a bad kick. I've never heard a kicker say anything like that. And then the other one, Jeff Fiegels told us who, Jeff Fiegels and Sean Landetta have been around a long time as punters, but there are quirky kickers and punters in this league. <laughs> and he also said that Ryan Landell will sometimes say, gosh, my feet are too big and they don't get down quick enough for me to plant. So they are quirky. But last year, Ryan Lindell had a big game for the Seahawks against Cleveland. He kicked three out of four from 49, 23, and 52 for a game winner. So he's been in pressure situations as well. Last year, Lindell was 4-5 from this distance. Snaps down, hold. Looks like he pushed it to the right. It's no good. So after all that, and one attempt only in the end zone, as you mentioned, Dave Craig, 
the Seattle Seahawks come away with nothing. And that's Charles Woodson coming off the field hurting. So Mike Holmgren shaking his head a little bit, wondering what he's got to do to get some offense going. But he's also got to be wondering what he's got to do to get that defense to shut down those gaping holes inside. The defensive line for the Seahawks has got to put some pressure on. We'll see right here, Charles Woodson comes in and catches the leg of the kicker. Hopefully all it was was he just got kicked, kicked in the arm, and uh, he won't be injured too much. We'll see in the second half. So this will be the final play of the first half. They'll take it in with those numbers. The Raiders 28 and the Seahawks 7. That's the end of the first half. Welcome back to Oakland. We're at halftime here. The Raiders up big over the Seattle Seahawks 28 to 7. And let's take a look at some of the action here in the first quarter. We got Rick Cannon drop back and again. Finding Tim Brown, two veterans knowing where each other is in the field. Here, Sean Alexander, the Raiders are trying to stop him. They fake it to him. They get it to Ela Matuli. Matuli for a touchdown. And uh, that's the start of it, 7 to 7. And now they just gaff the Seahawks defense, Charlie Garner, right up the middle. And the Raiders came out in the no huddle. And it seemed like the Seattle Seahawks never got back on track after that. And Rich Gannon has had plenty of time to throw the football all day long and this here the last touchdown by randy jordan not a whole lot of white shirts in the area and there dave craig is a look at the halftime stats well the halftime stats i'll tell you what one thing right there third down conversion by the raiders total yards huge by the raiders and the rush yards it's just not, almost 100 yards for the raiders and nothing for sean alexander so the raiders have done their job defensively Defensively for the Seahawks, their defensive line has got to come to play here in the second half. So Sebastian Janikowski will kick this one away. Rookie Maurice Morris, a second round pick, the 54th player taken overall by the Seahawks this year out of the University of Oregon. We'll start things off for us here in the second half. One, one player, a rookie, he played defensive end last year for Northwestern. Napoleon Harris has done a good job. He's surrounded by a lot of veterans, yes. which makes it a little bit easier for him. And we'll keep an eye on him in the second half. This is taken by Max Strong. It looked like he was going to do the old pitch back, but then Max kind of got some stars in his eyes and said, I'll take it up the middle. He gets the ball out past the 30, and that's where the Seahawks will take over. So Matt Hasselback who has really played much better than a lot of people thought considering the way preseason went. If you look at his numbers there, we'll try to get some points on the board for his team. The one question mark for the Seahawks turns out to be their big exclamation point. He's done a great job so far in the first half, Matt Hasselbeck. Raiders lined up start with that 3-4 defense that we talked about in the first half. Hasselbeck will start with the pass. He's in trouble already. He'll go down. The one difference you can tell between Rich Gannon and Matt Hasselback is that Rich Gannon would be able to get out of that type of little congestion back in the backfield. Matt Hasselback doesn't have the quickness to get away from him. Tony Bryan Matt, on the sack. Matt's dropping back and trying to find people. Now here's the type of elusiveness that a Rich Gannon has. Matt Hasselback runs into to Floyd Womack and it makes it look like it was Floyd's fault, but Matt has to be able to elude the defensive rush a little bit better. A loss of five. Walter Jones, where are you? Hasselback looking inside, looking for Corin Robinson. And the coverage is all there. Torrey James is in his pocket, his hip pocket. He was, but that's a pass that Matt could have gotten down a little bit lower. It's a slant pattern. You just throw it down a little bit low, give your receiver an opportunity. When you throw a slant up high up in the air, that's no good. It allows the defensive back to come over the top. You throw it low, he can slide, make that sliding catch. Seahawks one for seven on third down conversions today. You won't come out. And we're looking at a third and long. John Perella for the Raiders oh, no. called timeout. Prior to the ball being snapped, Oakland called a timeout. That's their first team timeout. The 
we'll come back for this third and 15. Raiders up big in Oakland. Welcome back to Oakland. The sombreros are out, the sunglasses are out. And even the Raider faithful, they kind of turned it down a few notches. They feel they're that much in control. Third and forever for the Seahawks. Pressure immediately, and Hasselback takes a shot from linebacker Eric Bart. My goodness, you talk about a mix-up in the protection scheme, Dave Craig. Well, they brought three players from the Seahawks side. One was free, and that's Eric Barton right there. When you get a free oh. shot on him, you should always protect from the inside out as an offensive lineman. You do not want a linebacker coming at your quarterback free. So there was some schematic problems there and some physical problems. One is you didn't block him, and two, you didn't know who to block. When your chin strap is up around your nose, that is a physical problem. And that will bring on another punting situation for the Seahawks. Lindell. Excuse me, that's Fiegel. He punts and there's contact down the field. And a Raider is injured and we've got a flag down. That's Buchanan. Willie Williams was the return man. He's injured. The Buchanan's up. Fair catch interference on the kicking team, number 27. On the kicking team, number 27. That's a 15-yard penalty, first down. Larry Nimmers gets his directions right, and that's Willie Williams, 27, who interfered with the fair catch signal of Philip Buchanan. 28-7, Raiders. Well, Willie Williams, 10 years in the NFL, probably isn't used to running down on covering punts very often. This is his 10th year. You don't see that very often from a, a veteran in the NFL. And he hit the rookie, Philip Buchanan. The Seahawks are claiming he got pushed into him, but man, there wasn't much contact. He just ran right into him. So the Raiders will take over at about midfield, right on the dirt, on second base area. They've got two tight ends in the game. Gannon looking across the inside. That's Jerry Rice. Rice. Complete. He's across the 40 to about the 37. Let's go to James Brown for a game break in Los Angeles. JB. Hey, Ron, after cutting the lead to three, Tampa Bay cutting it to three. New Orleans comes right back. You know what? A new contract would do that. Look at that ball thrown by Aaron Brooks. 41 yard touchdown pass to Dante Stallworth. Two and a half million dollar signing bonus will, in fact, do that. Back to Ron and Dave. JB, you got that right, my man. A maybe little bit of cash will maybe definitely that's why inspire I didn't you. throw it very far when I was playing. <laughs> Gannon's going to try to throw it far here. Pump fakes, comes back the other side. Once again, all the time in the world, he's got Charlie Gardner. And Charlie Gardner might lose a couple. Willie Williams initially in on the hit, along with Marcus Bell. And that's a great point, because I look at the average salary, the minimum salary for rookies, which is about 175,000. I look at for what it is for veterans, which is about 375. That, that's a, a little bit more money than you played for in that first year, yeah. huh? Coming yeah, out of no Milton doubt College. About that. It's different, different day and age nowadays. Jerry <laughs> <laughs> Rice comes in motion, handoff Gardner. He's got a big hole. He's chasing on the outside, and runs over Ken Lucas, but not before he picks up a big one. Ten yards on the play. One of the things that Rich Gannon gets to see here is that they put six in the box, and as opposed to their linebacker moved out over the slot receivers, so he sees six guys standing there, and he goes, I know I'm going to run the football. Number 70 reports eligible for Oakland. So Charlie Gunner just runs right up there. I mean, nobody touched him until Ken Lucas gets his hands on him. They dropped one of their defensive linemen out, and he just juked him. So he went right by that, and uh, it was all on Charlie Gunner after that. Third and short. There goes Ooh. a mouthpiece. We saw it from up here as Wheatley is rocked by Antonio Cochran. And if anybody sees a mouthpiece floating, I guess it <laughs> wasn't Wheatley's mouthpiece. It was somebody's because Antonio Cochran, who was just Ooh. falling back in coverage, just put a look on him like it was a boxing match. There it is. Maybe it's tape. It's t something went flying, though. I mean, that's hitting right there. 
Stuff starts flying off there. Somebody's getting hit and somebody's doing the hitting. It's like they say, Dave, always have plenty of air in your helmet before you walk out of there. Well, Antonio Cochran, he says, I don't like that dropping back in coverage thing. I'm going to go hit somebody. So he pushes Snitchcomb out of the way, Barry Ooh. Sims out of the way, and he hits. Watch, watch carefully. You'll see the UFO fly out right there to yeah. the right top of your screen. That's a projectile. Antonio's letting them know, hey, look, it, I'm not dropping back in any more pass coverage. I want to hit somebody, and that's what he did. You know, defensive linemen like that for a while, especially <laughs> if they can get a pick and the quarterback's throwing a lot. But if things aren't going good, it's like, hey, send me up field. When he was at Georgia, he was used to hitting people, and that's what he's doing. So the Raiders convert on that first down. The end around, handoff again. Wheatley again. Excuse me, that's Richie, the fullback. Well, I'll tell you what, another thing, they did that reverse, and it's one of the few times they did it to the Raiders' left. And that time, Antonio Cochran, he wasn't having no part of that Jerry Rice fake reverse thing. He went after the, th after the uh, John Ritchie, which he was probably surprised that John Ritchie was carrying the ball. And uh, so the Raiders are going to take note of that. Maybe in the fourth quarter, we'll see Jerry might take the ball. And back to pass. Just a quick flip over the middle, and he's got Charlie Garner again, and that's another first down. And the Raiders don't look like they're doing anything fancy. And it's funny because they said they worked on the vertical passing game. Bill Callahan said we're going to try to get more 20-plus yard passes in, but everything's been very West Coast-like. Well, this is kind of fancy here. You'll see Jerry Porter coming in motion, and they're both going to go across the field. Jerry Rice, and boom, right there, Charlie Garner. If you're a linebacker, you see Jerry Porter, you see Jerry Rice, you're looking at them, and then up the field comes Charlie Garner, well executed. Garner alone in the backfield. He'll get the step over draw. Breaks to the outside, trying to get away from Ken Lucas, but he won't. Nice pursuit on the play by the Seattle Seahawks defense. Brandon Mitchell also in on the tackle. It's a good job what the Raiders do. They, you know, they talk about they want to get the vertical passing game, but really their bread and butter, like Rich Gannon told us Friday night or Friday afternoon, he said, we do not want to go from the intake, take ourselves away from the integrity of our offense, which is dumping the ball here and there and using crossing patterns. That time they used crossing patterns to get a vertical pass to Charlie Garner. So his vertical passing is getting the ball to the guys 10 yards and letting them run 20, 30 yards. Confusion by the Seahawks defense. Timeout, Seattle. It's their first team timeout. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Again, we're looking at a second and 11. We'll see the outside, now he's gonna take off and run. Nope, he'll take off and have a seat. No place to go. He might have got a strawberry on that one. Brandon Mitchell will get credit for the sack. A loss of four. Again, he did the smart thing. He wanted to throw a corner out to Jerry Rice. And it was possibly there. And a lot of quarterbacks, and even myself, I would have forced that in there just because I know it's Jerry Rice. But Rich did the smart thing. He pulled it down, tried to find somebody else. And so he still keeps his team in the red zone, averts an interception, and gives them another opportunity on third down. Third and 15. The Seahawks' defense has to be tired. They've been on the field a lot this game. No protection in the backfield. Gannon running. Now he's going to take off and go for the, mark the marker. He's out of bounds. Marcus Bell pushes him out. Well, that's clearly a give-up play there. He just wants to hold on to the ball well, and take the field goal. The Seahawks, the Seahawks drop back in zone coverage, not wanting to give up the touchdown and pretty much giving him the, the field goal. It looked like he could have thrown it to Williams, but Ken Lucas was right there. He's kind of baiting him into making him throw, and Rich Cannon wasn't falling for it. Janikowski. Janikowski will come on for the 27-yard field goal. He has the football on the hold. Ball's up, and it's good. So the Raiders tack on three. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Bay Area. The Oakland Raiders jumping all over the Seattle Seahawks 31-7. These two old divisional rivals really meeting for the last time for a while, for about four years. It'll be four years, and I'm sure the Raiders are going to make sure the Seahawks hope it's another four years. Janikowski kicks off. Max Strong will head north and south. He gets rocked down there somewhere 
about the 26 yard line. 15 yards on the return. And you talk about that defense, Dave, and they just brought in a lot of guys and we didn't know if they'd all work together, but one thing they've got on this crew some age and a little bit a lot of talent i'll tell you there's a great story about trace armstrong to be able to come back from an achilles tendon injury that he oh, had suffered yeah. last year Big. and how hard he worked during the off season and even into training camp to get himself to come back at 36 years of age you got to give trace armstrong a lot of credit for that because an achilles tendon injury is tough for anybody let alone when you're 36 years old and that shows his desire to really want to get back he talked about how much he loved this sport so a lot of credit goes to Trace Armstrong for the way he got back for this year. Sean Alexander took it inside, and it was the same old thing for Seahawk fans. A big pile up, a cloud of dust, and maybe two yards. Well, you know, you talk about the Rod Woodson, too, and there's another guy, an experienced veteran, Romanowski, telling Mr. Davis, hey, look, it, I want to come back and win you another championship, and championship, and that's what Al Davis is all about, is winning championships and his commitment to excellence. And... Uh, I'll tell you, that's what Al Davis is all about. Hasselback barely got it off, intended for Heath Evans. Here's Rod Woodson and Bill Romanowski. I mean, you got some players that have been around for a long, long time. The big guys in the middle, Sam Adams, John Perella, who's just an outstanding defensive lineman. The Chiefs wanted to get him. Sam Adams was with the Seahawks, then he went to the Ravens. Um, these are guys that they plugged them in, put them into the right places. Granted, they haven't played together for a long time, but you know what? They are good. Third and eight. Hasselbeck looking deep, nothing there. Now he's running for his life. Somehow he gets it away. There's a man in the area, so he'll avoid the intentional grounding call. But nonetheless, the Seahawks will punt again. Tony Bryant applied the initial pressure. And Tony Bryant is a guy, without Reagan Upshaw, without... Daryl Russell, who's been suspended for a bunch of off-the-field reasons, has done pretty darn well today. Well, Tony Bryant is just, he kept his motor running all day. You can see from the get-go, and he's one of the guys that comes back here. Matt Hasselback hurt his wrist a little bit. We'll see how he's doing, but Tony Bryant keeps his motor running, and we'll see what we get out of Mr. Buchanan. You speak of all the youth age they have. Let's look at one of their young fellas. Jeff Beagles punts it away. A nice kick. He'll get a hang, chance. Hang, hang. Oh. Mm. Phillip, he's going to second guess that one. Nonetheless, it'll mean more silver and black when we come back. Welcome back to Oakland. Raiders dig over the Seattle Seahawks. And Matt Hasselback, as you pointed out, Dave, took a shot from Tony Bryant. He's getting attended to on the sidelines. Meanwhile, Gannon has had all the shots in the world as he hands off. Hey, it's over. And they'll get a couple inside. Well, they're becoming more stout in the middle a little bit. Seahawks defense, but this is what they needed to do in the first quarter, second quarter especially. You know, as we talked about earlier, Rich Gannon in the officials meeting and training camp, rules meeting, the rest of the team walked out. Gannon, along with a few other Raiders, was one of the guys to stay in, and that didn't sit well not only with some of his Raider teammates, but with a lot of other people here in the Bay Area. They wonder what he was thinking about. And we know what Charlie Gardner is thinking about. And at one point, Dave Craig, you've got to know that play is coming. Well, you know, you go back to the Rich Gannon thing. Quarterbacks have their own special meeting area. And when he came out there, he said they didn't exactly know what was going on. But I'll tell you this, on this play, the Seahawks, I don't know why they don't know what's going on because this has been run all day. Charlie Garner right up the middle behind Barrett Robbins, Frank Middleton, Matt Stinchcomb. They were faking that reverse, but they are going right at Chad Eaton of the Seahawks, and he's just getting pushed back. Defense is just getting gashed. 20 yards on that one. Here comes that reverse that you've been seeing all day. They finally hand it off to Jerry Porter. And Porter makes very little of it before he's brought down by Ken Lucas. You know, Ken Lucas is a guy that had to fight for the starting cornerback position with Doug Evans, who they brought in as a free agent from Carolina. And across the board, you have to like the Seahawks cornerbacks, but you know, that hasn't been what it's about today. It's been about <laughs> the run game. Well, you know, you talk about Doug Evans. He's been with Mike Holmgren and even back way back in Green Bay. He's a proven cornerback, but Ken Lucas is young, and he's going to be a good quarterback. Cornerback. Mike Holmgren says he's got the Pro Bowl caliber player as well. 
He's making a lot of tackles, and there's Lucas in on that one as well. Nothing gets on a defensive back's nerves, a cornerback's nerves more than having to come up and make tackle <laughs> after tackle after tackle. But that's a good point because you'll throw the ball on down, you know, play action pass. Now you've got to go and cover a guy. Exactly. Well, and Marcus Robertson's been making a lot of tackles. Reggie Tung's been up in there, so you know that when your secondary is your leading tacklers, your defensive line isn't quite doing their job. He's looking at a third and five. And it shoots, scores, Charlie Gardner, first down Raiders. Let's go to Los Angeles, JB, for another game break. Hey, Ron and Dave, take a look at St. Louis. Not very productive offensively today. Jeff Wilkins missing this 39-yard field goal, so the score remains the same. Bad snap indeed. 16-13, Denver on top in the fourth. Back to Ron and Dave. Dave, I think uh, this... St. Louis Rams are kind of picking up where they left off, unfortunately. Things not going too good for them there in Denver. Well, I remember a couple years ago, Denver and St. Louis had a shootout for opening game. This year, the score is a little bit different, and uh, the Broncos are doing a good job holding them off. And that's one of the teams that the Seahawks, as we mentioned earlier, won't be seeing any more of, being that they're in the new NFC West division. That's Kaz weird. Levinsky, Looks like he's limping a little bit. See, this is all new to a lot of guys. Kazabinski, as we said, along with Napoleon Harris right. on the other side, it, you know, this is his first start in a regular season game you know, as a starter for this season. And you got to believe a lot of things are going through his head. Two middle linebackers combined at four years. Three of them are with Kazabinski and one with Napoleon Harris. Wheatley. Picks up four, runs over a couple, if, and if Wheatley I'm, is still down. If I'm Seattle, I'm looking at these two teams right here is that I don't want to play. Arizona got a chance of coming back and becoming a good football team, but they got pushed into a division that could be very, very difficult for the Seahawks. And if I'm Arizona, I'm kind of liking that divisional change. I don't have to take those trips no. back east. You see Tyrone here just getting thrown around. And Sometimes you get your legs all crossed around there. Brandon Mitchell came in there and kind of got him caught up. Hopefully, though, Tyrone, who's worked very hard, will be all right. He's also got a bowling tournament he does for a charity, so <laughs> hopefully he'll be ready for that in the next couple of weeks. See those changes up front in the Raider offensive line we talked about in the beginning of the game. You don't have the veteran Steve Wisniewski there anymore. He retired in the offseason. Mo Collins was set to go at the right guard. He injured a knee. Torsen Cartlidge had to have surgery two weeks ago, so they had to do some flipping around, but Stinchcomb has filled in very well. Garner again. And what a pickup Charlie Garner oh. was for the Raiders. I mean, here's a guy that comes to him from San Francisco last year in a move that I was really surprised San Francisco let him go, let him get out of there. And he just really adds another dimension to your whole game. And people forget Charlie Garner is not a young guy. He's been there nine years. Well, Charlie Garner, as a matter of fact, it's a rarity. In this game, we have two guys that have gained 200 yards in one game in their career, Sean Alexander and Charlie Garner. But he's a quarterback best friend when he can catch the ball coming out of the backfield. A huge discrepancy in rushing yards, and this is why right here as Garner busts loose again. And if the Raiders were upset at all about what Sean Alexander did to him last year, they're taking it out on him again here. Again, right up the middle. That's where it's been done all day, and that's where it's been done right there. You talk about Stinchcomb, Robbins, and Middleton, and you're not seeing much of Brandon Mitchell, Isaiah Kazavinsky, and Chad Eaton. And all he does is go up there. Jerry Rice is still downfield. And that's where you get your big runs when the new receivers are blocking for you. 15 yards on the pickup. And Garner has to come off and get a rest. Terry Kirby will check in the backfield with Richie at fullback. Hand off to Kirby. He's dancing oh. the ball's out. Seahawks pick it up, and here we go. That's Sean Springs, and guess what? I don't think Rich Gannon's going to catch Sean Springs. He's close. Rich Gannon catches Sean Springs. Are you kidding me? 
Sean Springs, who was heralded as a sub 4-2 40-yard dash guy, is run down by Rich Gannon. And unless Springs was hurt before the play, a 71-yard run. Well, he's kind of cramped up a little bit. I'm sure that had a little bit to do with it. Woo! Rich Rich Gannon, though, is a fast quarterback, and he had the right angle, athlete. and he took the right angle. Kirby trying to get it into the end zone, but he got the catch, to the catch Sean Springs. He, he's got to be running. Orlando Huff stripped him of the ball. So the Seahawks will take over at the 22-yard line. That's Sean Alexander. He got a couple. Well, you go back to that other story. These players on the Raiders know what type of quarterback Rich Gannon is. For him to run across the field like that, I mean, if, wow. he, if he didn't come to a meeting, whatever, and he was somewhere else, I think they realize what kind of quarterback they got, what kind of guy he is. But Sean Springs can, Sean Springs can hear a lot about this. As you say, Dave, he had a great angle on him. Hasselback checks off. He's got plenty of time on the play clock. All they need is one for the first down. I don't know if Sean Alexander got it. There's a look at the run again, straight from the pickup. Well, you would think if you saw Sean Springs with the football, he'd be down for a touchdown. He, he looks, looks like, like he's laboring. laboring. Yeah, he's he laboring. looks like something's going on there. But you know, that won't matter Monday morning in no. the meetings. No. <laughs> Whenever you get run down by a quarterback or a kicker, you're going to hear about it. I got ran down by a quarterback, I know. <laughs> Even though it was Doug Flutie. Oh, uh, he's a pretty good one, too. Hasselbeck complete to Jackson. Jackson gets his knee turned around. Tackle on the play by Romanowski. Jackson's lucky he doesn't come up hurt on that one. Well, you know, you talk about Bill Romanowski and his experience. Where he's been a big factor is calming down a player like Napoleon Harris. And he's doing, he's doing just what he was telling Napoleon Harris. And he tells Napoleon Harris, you just play football and react to what you see. And that's what Bill Romanowski just did. He stayed in his area. He didn't go way across the field with the fake handoff, and he was right there to make the tackle. Got a little leg whip on him there, too. A loss of two on the play. Second and 12. That's about looking for the end zone, looking for the tight end. Stevens, and Stevens is 6'7", 265, and he still managed to overthrow him. Jeremy Stevens is going to be a good football player in the NFL. He's a rookie out of Washington. And he, he, he makes some great catches. He's a really good athlete. We talked to a lot of the, the Seahawks uh, players. They say he's going to be a good athlete when, once he gets learning this NFL. And then there again, Hasselback taking some more hits. A lot of hits there, Cole. Third and 12. Split backs. Hasselback holding. Complete to Alexander. Alexander's got nothing but black around him. It all started with Romanowski, and the rest of the crew came in. And that'll be the end of the third quarter as the Raiders shut down that attempt. And that's the end of the third quarter here. The Oakland Raiders 31, the Seattle Seahawks 7. There's some quarterbacks getting their helmet knocked around backwards down here on the field. You got to like Matt Hasselbeck's toughness, though, because this kid is hanging in here. He's taking a beating. He had a hurt wrist earlier, and right there it got hit again. Lindell will try from 33 yards. Excuse me, 32 yards. It's up. It's good. And the Seahawks finally answer with something. We'll come back to see if they can continue to answer here in the fourth quarter. Open 31, Seattle 10. Dave, what goes on in the quarterback's mind when you're taking hit after hit after hit and the game isn't going well? Well, and this is what happened last year. Hasselback sacked six times, left the game with a groin and ankle injuries. And then Trent Dilfer came in. And on the third play of the game, he takes this shot here. He gets a concussion and he's out. A late hit by Elijah Alexander. If you're Trent Dilfer in that particular, not much goes on in your mind after that one. 
But the other ones, it just makes you more conscious and more weary of where's it going to come from next. And you, and you lose a little confidence in your offensive line, and you can't focus on the defensive line, you're not reading your progressions as well. Derek Combs. Now the Seahawks are saying they got the ball, but we'll tell you when we come back. The skull and crossbones, it's been all that for the Seahawks so far today. And I'm surprised Rich Gannon still has any gas left in the tank after that rundown of Sean Springs. You know quarterbacks are always in good shape. They have to be to handle all the emotional pressures and everything else that goes along with this game. And at his age, he's still doing it. I'm impressed with that. Him, Trace Armstrong, Rod Woodson. This pass complete to Richie. Richie breaks one tackle. Let's go to L.A. James Brown for this game break. Ron, you know the story too well. Ed McCaffrey only one game last year because of a broken leg. First game back this season. Boy, you know folks are excited to see him with that touchdown catch right there. 23-13, under three minutes to play. Rams are driving, but Denver on top by 10. Back to Ron and Dave. Well, that's not good news for Raider fans. You know, of course, they want to see all the bad luck in the world for Denver. Nothing but good luck for this guy here, Charlie Gardner. Gardner has just continued to gash the Seattle Seahawks defense. Well, this has been something, a story that they've used all day today, and I'll tell you, 175 yards rushing, 180 yards passing, 355. That's a lot of stuff done by the Raiders. Man. I mean, that makes up for every bit of that loss that they got last year up in Seattle when Sean Alexander ran for 266. And Hasselbeck didn't have a bad day. Well, that was the key they talked about, stopping Sean Alexander. They've done that. And they have, at the same time, not allowed Matt Hasselback to beat them. I still think this Seahawks team misses the speed and quickness inside of Anthony Simmons, the linebacker yeah. who was injured in the first quarter. Yeah, I agree with that. You've got to have some speed that goes side to side right there. And Isaiah, Isaiah Kazabinski, I don't know if he has all that. So Rich Gannett continues to operate the silver and black. The Raiders stay in a three wide out look to continue the assault. Gannett with the side on, that's Randy Jordan. He busts out and he'll have the first down. It is amazing the ability of Rich Gannon. Did you see that little sidearm whip? To find people and throw it sidearm and Randy Jordan to be there and to be able to catch it. We talked about Richie not catching it, but I'll tell you what, this is unbelievable. Just you watch Rich Gannon in the lanes he has to try to find the throw through here. He's standing there and he used to throw it right through here. Sidearm. I mean, that's what you got to do as quarterback. You don't have to be the prototypical throw the ball 80, 90 yards down. Just get it out of there. Just get it out there and get it to the guys. Let them make plays. That's what they get paid for. 15 yards and a first down for Randy Jordan. Good toss to Wheatman. He turns north and south, and that usually means a headache for somebody. He'll get close to the 45 before he's brought down by Ken Lucas. A gain of four. Way too many tackles for the secondary of the Seattle Seahawks. Well, that's because guys like Barry Sims and Matt Stinchcomb are getting out around the edge, making blocks downfield. As an offensive lineman, you like to go after those little guys and quit banging on the big guys. And look at the tempo at which the Raiders get to the line of scrimmage, the, the way they're operating. And this is something that Bill Callahan, the head coach, talked about. He said, we practiced every single day in training camp with the mindset of playing faster, getting out of the huddle faster, and speeding up the game for our opponents. Their tempo is much better uh, offense to defense compared to what the Seahawks is. The only thing I can see is Rich Gannon is a smart old veteran. He should let that clock run down to maybe five, four, three seconds, but they are getting in and out of the huddle. He gets to recognize what the defense is doing so he can audible. That's a good point. Get that clock going. Pick up a three on the play. It'll bring up third and three. Here comes a blitz by Seattle. It's picked up. It's tipped. Ball's in the air, and it's intercepted. Now that's the problem with throwing the ball sidearm and low. You can get it tipped, and that's, that's where it costs Rich Gannon right there. Willie Williams, number 27, comes down with the Oski. So let's see if the Seahawks can do something with it. 
Well, one of the things we talked about was Rich Gannon's ability to throw the ball sidearm. Right here, you watch Matt Stinchcomb, and he's going to get his head knocked right there by one of Rich Gannon's passes, and it doink, and it goes up in the air. And that's one of the times where it actually costs a ball is thrown so low. When you're up 31 to 10, why are you even passing to begin with? Anyway, Hasselbeck has got a pass. Flags are everywhere, and he's just going to run it now. This could be a headache. Very smartly gets out of bounds, and he gets an earful from the Raiders' sidelines. But we've got flags down. Larry Nimmers has thrown his share of flags today. Rod Coleman's down. Holding on number 70. That penalty is declined. Illegal hands to the face. Number 97. That penalty is accepted. Oh, 97. Well, Jerry Wunsch is number 70. Illegal hands 97. to the face on 90, 97 of the defensive team <laughs> holding on the offense number 70. The penalty's offset. We'll replay first down. All right, Larry Nimmers finally gets it together. Carella <laughs> had a problem. He had a penalty. And the other penalty was on Jerry Wunsch, the right tackle. And that's Rod Coleman being assisted off the field. Maurice Morris goes in motion. Here's the end around handoff to Gerald Jackson. He avoids one. He won't avoid the rest. The Lawrence Grant showed some good speed by making, you know, Jackson get further outside, enabling Great the other receivers. Yeah, he got upfield. He's seen a lot of those reverses, I'm sure, at practice because that's all the Raiders did today. You have to ask the question, Dave, how badly do the Seattle Seahawks this starting left tackle, Walter Jones. Jones, as everyone knows, designated franchise tag player, which means he would receive $4.8 million this year if he signed the offer sheet. That's complete to Sean Alexander, and we've got a penalty to go along with it. Jones has not yet signed the offer sheet and is not in camp. Well, right, here's a stupid thing, too, I think. Uh Chuck Bresnahan's yelling at DeLawrence Grant for pushing Sean. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 97 defense. We'll add 15 yards to the end of the run. First down. Well, folks, that was not John Perella because John Perella just ran from the sidelines <laughs> onto the field. In fact, he looked back like, what? Was that me? No, that was that guy right yeah. there in black. He was and pretty much out of bounds, DeLawrence. Just let him go. He wasn't going anywhere. And those are the stupid penalties that the Raiders... Yeah. They constantly keep getting, but fortunately, you got a three-touchdown lead. You don't have to worry about it. Bresnan is not very happy. Chuck Bresnan. Look at him. Raider defensive coordinator letting everyone know that's not Raider ball right there. So the Seahawks will get a fresh set of downs. And another chance to put this one in the end zone. Quick flip to Corn Robinson. Robinson got away from the initial tackle. Barton in on it, Torrey James makes a stop. Well, you know, going back to the Walter Jones story, it's real simple. You got this agent for Walter Jones who wants a certain amount of money. And he wants his player to get a certain amount of money. Mike Holmgren says, hey, if you come into camp, you sign this tender offer as a uh, franchise player, you're going to get paid and we'll negotiate the contract. The, the, the one problem from a player and agent is he doesn't want to get hurt and miss out on all the big money he could probably get later on. So they're knocking heads about that one. But it really just hurts the player and his teammates more than anything. And oh, by the way, a quick footnote to Walter Jones, and I'm sure he already knows this, he loses a ton of money every week that he's out. Well, talking to some of the Seahawks people, he's losing like $289,000 to $300,000. Per week, per week. that you're out and not signed under the franchise tag. So, But now his agent would say to you, well, yeah, he might lose that, but he could lose $10, 15000000 million if he signed and got hurt. That's a good point. How much is enough? I got to believe that's enough for me. Or how much is not enough? Has he, Hasselbeck flips this out to Sean Alexander, oh. who takes a oh. shot from Tony Bryant. And that hit right there pretty much sums up the Seahawks' day and the day for running back Sean Alexander. I think when we were talking to Sean last night, he wasn't expecting any of that. So he's walking to the sidelines right now. And I don't know if we expected for Tony Bryant to be this effective today. He Tony had five Bryant. sacks last year. Well, you know, Matt Hasselback is trying. He's scrambling around. Now he says, I don't want to get hit anymore. I'll give it to you. And then, boom, right there. He kind of got pushed into him. 
but he delivered a big hit right there. Great hit by Tony Bryant on Sean Alexander. Fourth and five, definitely go for it territory. Hasselback inside, complete to Bobby Ingram. And That's Bobby the throw. Ingram is the go-to guy in clutch situations. He's been in the league for seven years, and there's an example right there. That is the throw. And Bobby Ingram is a guy that Daryl Jackson, he talked about uh, Corn Robinson, is learning from him. You keep it down low right there where yeah. a guy like Bobby Ingram, he will make that catch for you. He's a quarterback-friendly receiver. I had him in Chicago when he was a rookie come out of Penn State. I mean, Bobby Ingram is always going to be where the quarterback knows that he can get the ball to him. Nine yards and a first down on the pickup. Pass, pass, pass. Quick flip out to Alexander. He got maybe four or five. Actually, he got eight. He was able to fall forward for eight. You know, the Seahawks, they, they need that more sense of urgency. I mean, they're in the huddle and they're taking their time. They've got an opportunity to get back in this game. A lot of weird things happen in the NFL. They need to show some sense of urgency and say, hey, exactly. let's get it, make it 31 to to 17 here and two touchdowns. I mean, there's seven minutes to go. I don't see that sense of urgency that I'd like to see from the Seahawks. That's a great point, Dave Craig, and that's exactly why Chuck Bresnahan was so upset over the penalty out of bounds. Nothing here. Travian Banks loses a lid. Sean, Sean Alexander didn't get much. Well, Travian Smith, he does a good job right there, getting his head in there, knocked off his helmet, but the Raiders are giving it up and, you know, doing everything they have to to make plays. They keep uh, substituting players, too. You see Perella coming in and out. Mm -hmm. and a Chris lot Cooper. of that today. Yes, a lot of that. He said, we're going to put the people in and out right there. Boom, you get the helmet kicked off by your own player. And uh, he said, oh, man, i got to go pick that up now. <laughs> Alexander inside. Alexander likes to run inside, but he hasn't been able to get that big explosion, that big play that he's gotten in the past. Right, he hasn't, the, the Raiders have made sure of that. When you give up 266 yards, you're not going to let that happen again. And again, I'm surprised though, seven minutes and, I don't know, eight minutes and 12 seconds were going on when this drive is still going, and they are still huddling up and, you know, just a little bit more sense, sense of urgency. I don't mind the huddling up, let's, let's make it happen quicker. Right there they go. Eric Barton left the game. Second down and two. When will they take a shot in the end zone? Oh. There's movement on both sides of the ball. The Lawrence Grant moved and the tight end, Jeremy Stevens, moved also. Who moved her first? Prior to the snap, full start on the offense, number 20. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, it's neither of the two. They catch Maurice Morris. Maurice went out in motion, and he kind of went forward toward the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. And then your tight end move, and then, then the defensive end to Lawrence Grant moves. So everybody moved, but everybody really, moved. It, all, it all started with Maurice Morris, the rookie. He goes out, and he's going to start forward before he's supposed to. Yeah, there and then is. everything else went to heck. But I'll tell you what, that was his penalty. Good call. Bad penalty, good call. <laughs> Seahawks threatening the score. Hasselbeck flips inside, looking for Alexander. Nothing, and another flag. And you know what? These officials are about to do yeah. a rotator cuff. I'm telling you, they have to ice down Damn. after this game. They are throwing flag after flag. Dirty. Holding. Defense. Five yards. Automatic. First down. As I was saying, there's only one way to be a nose tackle in the NFL. You got to be big, down, and dirty. And you got to have a brush cut. <laughs> Seriously. You got to have that cut. That's cut. old school. That is right, old school. Right. You, can't have, you can't have a long hair, man. I mean, some guys do it, but. I don't know if you tell Cortez Kennedy that. He was in there playing in that tackle. <laughs> I'd let him wear with any kind of cut they want. <laughs> so Seahawks get a little closer and a new set of downs. Screen. Alexander, he's got some room. That'll be a touchdown for the Seahawks. Now they're back in it within two scores. That's right, 11 yards on the pickup. And I think that's a great call coming from the sideline. It was well executed. One of the few times that they did something that was well executed. But, I mean, if they could have scored this one or two minutes earlier, they, they, they're in this game right now. Right here, 
Sean Alexander get the ball on the screen again. We said earlier they tried to screen. They got him to that fourth and one situation where they scored. Again, Mike Holmgren said, hey, let's use that play again. This time they scored with it. So Lundell will come on to attack an extra one. He does. 31-17, Seattle back in the hunt. Let's see if they can catch him. Back in Oakland, the Raiders 31 Seattle 17, the Seahawks finally answer. And what do they got to do now, Dave? Well, they need to play with more of a sense of urgency, like I was saying before. I know they were huddling, but they, they needed to speed up that process. It could have saved them two or three minutes, but they are back in this ball game. What they need to do now, stop, make a stop right now with your defense and get the ball back on a punt return or a big pass play or something and take it down there and get it within one score. Then anything can happen. And Bill will kick it away. I think he would kick it away. I don't, but it looks like yeah, an onside yeah. kick team out there. But they're going to kick it away. Terry Kirby is deep. He'll take it at the four yard line. He's shut down at the 20. Alex Bannister's done a good job today on the punt, stopping Philip Buchanan and running down on kickoffs. We'll be back in Oakland right after this. And in case you missed it, this is when Rich Gannon ran down Sean Springs. I still can't believe it. Well, the only guy I could see doing that would be Michael Vick. And uh, they had a little <laughs> discussion about it. I think Sean is saying, you know, I was hurt, man. I was hurt. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he just said, nice job. And Rich said, I don't care. It's going to look good for me anyway. <laughs> It'll look great on film. And what will look even better for the Seahawks is if they get off the field. And there's a cheap shot by Marcus Robertson. By Marcus Robertson, and it's going to cost the Seahawks team uh, just when we, they might have had something going. We just said, what do they need? They need to make a stop. They allowed them only to get two or three yards. They needed to make a stop. Viewers at home may not have seen that, but we could see it from up here. He took a shot at Roland Williams' head. Personal foul, defense, number 31, lay hit after the play was over. 15-yard penalty, first down. Marcus Robertson, he got hit from behind a Roland Williams, and then he came up and popped him. And it's the second one that gets the, that gets caught. That's we'll stupid. get to see right there. Now, we won't see him pop him right there, but, I mean, that's where it started. And Marcus Robinson's a veteran with a lot of pride. He let that get in the way of his team right there. It cost him 15 yards. Great, great player. Just made a dumb mistake right there, Marcus. So it's 522 and running here in the fourth quarter. Personal foul gives the Raiders first and 10 near midfield and that's Garner once again and those are the kind of penalties that cause you to lose football games and the Seahawks haven't had a lot of those types but very poorly timed by Marcus Robertson well, now they're actually stopping the run probably because that's they know that's what the Raiders are going to do but they are stopping the run and that Marcus Robertson penalty is very similar to the Trace Armstrong penalty before half. Mm -hmm. You know, like exactly. Bill Callahan was talking about, exactly. you know, we could have uh, could have used to get the ball back. So over the course of the season, these type of penalties add up, and you just you, you try to minimize them. But it's an emotional game, too. But you got to keep your head in certain situations, especially when you're close in the game. Remember the penalty by the Lawrence Grant. Right. Kept the drive alive for the Seahawks and led to a touchdown. Timeout, Oakland. That's their second team timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Take a look at the game summary. Things started off hot for the Raiders, especially with that no-huddle offense, or the hurry-up offense, I should say. But then it got going even more, and the penalties kicked in. Right, and Charlie Garner, I just wanted to point that out. Two touchdowns, 186 total yards. I mean, he does, the, he does it rushing the football. He does it carrying the, uh, catching the football, blocking. You know, he's not that much different than a Marshall Falk. He just doesn't get all the notoriety. But, you know, Charlie Garner is a good, good player. And uh, I'm sure Rich Gannon is very happy to have him on his team. And he went to Scottsdale Community College. He went to the Scottsdale same college. Scottsdale Community he College. He went to the same college that the punter for the Seahawks, Jeff Fiegels, went to. So he's come a long way, Charlie Garner has. And he doesn't take anything for granted. Yeah, but your story is great. 19 years <laughs> in the league, you went to Milton College. And what did you say you did when you got to the Seattle Seahawks complex coming out of Warsaw, Wisconsin? I just took some t-shirts and shorts in case they weren't going to invite me back just to say that I really did try out for a pro team. You crammed about 30 of them in your bag. Play action pass. Gannon looking. 
over the middle. Dangerous. Tim, Tim Brown can't hold on, nearly intercepted, and that may have been the opportunity. Now there's a flag, and a flag back in the backfield. Rich threw it from. Personal foul. Defense number 78. Extended his arms, roughing the quarterback. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, we'll see what happens after Rich throws the ball, but almost got thrown up as a. Mm. Antonio just didn't need to do that extra push. Mm, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't hurt Rich. I got I to gotta, I gotta confer with Howie Long on that one again. Not in this game. You need to have that penalty called. I mean, the official kind of went overboard by calling that penalty. That's two. That's 250. Yeah, that's right. 30 yeah. yards yeah. that they have given to the Raiders. They just called a timeout, an incomplete pass. They both would have stopped the clock for him. Bad calls, bad penalties, what have you, it's happened. First down pitch to Garner. Garner tried to go inside, stayed outside, picked up a couple before he's run out of bounds. Frank Middleton, 73, came back and put the jackhammer crack back on somebody. I the believe it was Brandon Mitchell. The jackhammer Woo. crack back. Well, Frank Middleton's big enough to do that. He is big enough to do that. That's a lineman at the end of the game right there. That's what you look like. Hard day's work. You get your running back a lot of yards, your quarterback and receivers, and they talk about everybody else. But Frank Middleton, we're talking about you and your offensive line. You did a great job today. Frank Middleton of the University of Arizona. The agent from Tampa Bay brought in last year. Wheatley. He'll get dirty and get a couple. And Dave, I don't know if I've ever seen this many formations run from the Raiders in a game before. I know they're trying to do that, and they did that last year, but that was one of the things. Number 70 reports eligible for Oakland. That was one of the things that Bill Callahan said we're going to emphasize. Lots of formations, and they work on it a lot in practice so they don't screw it up. They do work on it, and they work about on it effectively. They get in and out of the huddle quick. Bill Callahan said formationing causes mismatches, and it's up to Rich Gannon. He's got the good guy there to find him. And that's why you do all that formationing and moving of personnel. Third and two, the Raiders trying to ice down the Seahawks. Wheatley really tripped up, but he's got the first down. We'll wait for the spot to make sure. And that brings up another question regarding offensive coordinator Mark Tressman. A lot of people wanted to know how would Tressman and Gannon get along. Well, that remains to be seen. Mark Tressman is not the fiery type of offensive coordinator, the fiery type of personality that John Gruden was. And Rich Gannon can be fiery. He's a competitor. He's the type of guy that... If something isn't going his way, he's going to tell you about it and let you know where he stands. And, and Mark Tressman and him, they'll work that out as the season progresses. I'm sure they've had talks already. Gannon came out and very openly said, I miss John Gruden. I was a John Gruden fan. We were on the same page. And a lot of people will tell you, very close to the organization, that John Gruden had a way of getting into the head yeah. of Rich Gannon. I agree with that. That's not to say that him and Mark Tressman won't work well but he messes John Gruden 70 from, is still eligible for Oakland from the standpoint of they were just very similar personalities came in and worked hard got in early worked hard stayed in good shape both of them and they worked good together fourth and inches and I said earlier the Raiders trying to put ice on the Seahawks with a first down here Wheatley hit immediately if he got it he got it on second effort and I don't know if he did. Great penetration on the right side of the line by the Seahawks. And it'll all come down to the spot. And the spot apparently was good for the Raiders because it's a first down. As we mentioned before, this is what the Raiders got in exchange for the Gruden deal that sent him to Tampa Bay. Well, they've got, they got a lot in return for a coach. I mean, you got Buchanan, Buchanan right there and Walker. They got some good things. Tampa Bay got some good things, too. And they got cash paid to them. You know, and Al Davis the cash will find something. Bad. <laughs> but uh, Philip Buchanan is a player that's going to be around for a long time. We're going to see him in a lot of Pro Bowls. He's going to be out there next to Mr. Woodson sometime eventually. But Torrey James is also doing a good job. Wheatley will continue to pound away. And Wheatley has made it known he wants the rock this year. As we said earlier, the ball was taken away from him as we look at Raider owner Al Davis. 
The ball was taken away from him some at the end of the season because he had some bad fumbles and dropped balls. That's a two-minute warning. But he's a part of it now. That's the two-minute warning. We'll be back for the final two minutes right after this. We want to send a special hello to that man right there, Mr. Raider, Jim Otto, who's currently battling an advanced form of prostate cancer. We want to wish him all the best. Jim Otto started 210 consecutive games at center for the Oakland Raiders beginning in the inaugural season of 1960. In the Pro Football Player Hall of Fame, the man endured over 40 surgeries. But you know what, Dave? He's a part of the old school. And doesn't he yes, look he like is. it right there? It looks like he could still play Mr. Raider from Wausau, Wisconsin. motion here. Cannon trips as he hands off to Wheatley. And he'll drive it inside. Let's go to James Brown for this game break. Maybe. Ron, take a look at this exciting finish here. Tampa Bay trailing by three, third and ten. Brad Johnson rolling out, looking for Joe Jurevicius. Keenan McCardell catches it. It's not enough for the first down, so it is fourth down. The clock continues to run. Brad Johnson thinking he can spike it, realizing it's fourth down. Waves a special team unit on. They come out, so it is now time for Grammatica to try and boot this 40-yard field goal to tie it up. You see the clock winding down. Grammatica calmly comes up and puts a foot in it, and he nails his 40-yard field goal at the end of regulation, and we head into overtime. We'll take you to this game if it is still being played. Back to Ron and Dave. Wow, JB. <laughs> I tell you what. Martin Gramatica making up for that Chicago game last year when he missed the big one at the end. And that one is a burner, 2020. That is something else to see that. I mean, Brad Johnson should be more aware of what the situation you know, was. Yeah, either that or they didn't communicate it right from the sidelines as to what they were going to do. Well, you but got a field yeah. goal chance, you got to you take, take your it. chance. Yeah. I don't understand that one. Well, I'll tell you what, to sum up this game, I like Raiders' defensive line and the way their offensive line came out and played today. Seconds winding down here as the Raiders hey, are trying to wind this one out and open up the season with a win here at home. And it looks like they're going to do that. Randy Jordan carries, and they won't run another play. So the Seahawks limp into town without their starting quarterback and without the starting left tackle do the best they can, but it's not enough. The Oakland Raiders, big over the Seattle Seahawks, 31-17. For Dave Craig, I'm Ron Pitts. So long.